Amen. Yes. Once again, for another webinar series, it's a quite continuation for our uh, smart cities, and we are now on the series number three, which is the role of automation in uh, our community. So, before we start, uh, let's have a prayer. Uh, we have here Pastor Sunny Medina. Pastor Sunny, good afternoon, Pastor Sunny. <laughs> In this box, uh, the sample which says, Sir Sani, the right side. Yeah, sorry. Oh, powerful uh, afternoon, everyone. Well, thank you, uh, Chairman, and to all, uh, Mylene and uh, uh, Jenny Lu, and our guests for uh, this uh, afternoon. Thank you very much once again for having me. It's July 18, 2020. And again, uh, we have a very, very interesting topic, the role of automation in transforming our community. And uh, today, what I will share to uh, all of you is very relevant. The role of God in transforming our life. In John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So God's role in the lives of uh, people, people uh, number one, he loves. God loves unconditionally, and that's true. When God loves us, he gave his only son, and uh, selflessly, he, he, he gave it all. And uh, whoever, uh, nobody can give their own son as a sacrifice to those uh uh, to those uh, they don't uh, know, but God Himself gave His only Son, and that is role. And secondly, is He gave, He He gave, He loves, 
And last is he saved. God, when God saved unselfishly, when he loved unconditionally, when he gave eternally. And uh, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, this word uh, transforming, which is God's uh, role to every one of us, it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, be ye transform, transformed by the renewing of our mind. Yes, God wants us to transform. He wants us, uh, God is in the business of transforming from nothing into something, from sinful life into God's nature. Uh, life. He wants us to have life to the fullest. Yes, friends and brothers and sisters, God is in the business of transforming our lives from sinful life to godly life. Good afternoon, everyone. That's the role of God in transforming our lives. So let's pray, everyone. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for this uh, afternoon once again, oh Lord. You have given us the opportunity, oh God, to learn more, oh Lord, of this uh, topic, the role of automation in transforming our community. Lord, you are the one who uh, gave us time, and may we use this time, oh Lord, uh, uh, with quality, oh God. Help us, oh Lord, and be with us from start to finish, and bless everyone this afternoon. To you all the glory, honor, and praise, in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you very much. Salamat, Pastor Sunny. Of course, you. we also have Ma'am Maylin Abiba from Felka Multimedia and Jenny Lu as our moderator for today. So uh, we uh, prepare something for you. So we also have a guest speaker from USA, from Gearbox uh, uh, Labs. Good afternoon, Ma'am Jen. Good afternoon, Ma'am Maylin. How is that? Hello. Yes, good afternoon to all our viewers. I just wanted to, um, yeah, yeah. Today is a special day because for the first time in several months we are at broadcasting in the afternoon. Usually it's in the morning, so we, this is just an unusual day because of the power outage in Olongapo, where our uh, beloved chairman uh, Wax is uh, residing. So it's just uh, by next week we go back to the nine to twelve uh, schedule every Saturday, and I am honored to introduce to you. Our uh, partners of the Felta Multimedia, uh, we have. Uh, we are so grateful that they have woken up very early in the morning to join us this today, this afternoon in the Philippines. And uh, uh, Peter Haydock has uh, 25 years experience as an educator, and uh, Isabel Mendiola. It is a uh, Peter Haydock is the chief executive officer and the chief operations officer of Gearbox Labs from Wisconsin, USA. And Isabel Mendiola is the president. She's also an educator with 17 years of experience as an educator. And they will be presenting to us the Gearbox Lab demonstrations and also the Arduino classroom uh, demonstrations for us to use the Arduino in our respective schools or our respective homes. So I give to you Peter Haydock and Isabel Mendiola. All the way from Wisconsin, USA. A virtual applause since they have woken up so early in the morning. It's three o'clock in the morning in USA. And uh, they, uh, I hope they have their coffee. Right. So Hello? we have. Uh, yeah. They were having uh, uh, internet technicalities uh, earlier so it's not just the philippines even in the usa yeah. oh, oh, <laughs> in the i think it's because a lot of people are using the service so yung uh na maximize yung bandwidth no so it's yung distribution is very you know very crucial talaga. even here i was lucky to get the last uh slot done sa box because it's, it's gonna take months before they um line up a new one okay, i think we so far, yes. yeah while well, waiting uh but, once they get back but they have uh, they were smart enough to do a uh pre uh, pre-produced correct video <laughs> you know, Naramdaman they, na nila to eh. na an anticipate nila na magkakaroon ng uh, internet problems sa wisconsin 
So let's uh, have the video of the actual demonstration and they will be with us for the questions and answers. Question and answer. Okay. Yes. In our science lab, and was for supporting our subject species chemistry and biology. So, today we are going to give you a tour about the uh, every sensor and how we are using it. Uh, so, we are going to start with uh, a, uh, some examples in here. Uh, we have in this box uh, an example of each sensor, which is this one here. So we can start with the right side of the box. We have uh, one of the sensors which is uh, the sound. We use uh, this one for building prototypes that identify sounds uh, in barns or fields. And they um, as well as an alarm. So let's take a look at the sound sensor from our curriculum. Our next sensor is the soil moisture. So we have a, a, the sensor and uh, some of the cable. Uh, this sensor goes uh, into the soil like this. We will have an example. Uh, sometimes we attach an LCD so all the information can be displayed. Let's take a look at the soil moisture video from the curriculum. Our next sensor is the photoresistor. We use this one for detecting uh, intensity of light. And by adding a switch, we can turn off or on uh, lights. Now let's take a look at the light sensor from our curriculum. Our next sensor is a uh, tilt. This tilt sensor, uh, we use it for controlling the angle of inclination of tractors or sprayers in agriculture. Let's check the video showing tilt sensor at work. Let's take a look to the following sensor, which is uh, the distance. This one measure, uh, measures distances between a sensor and another object. Uh, it's useful as well for surveys. The distance sensor video shows how it measures distance to a moving object. The following 
sensor is uh, uh, part of the family of the NQs, and uh, these sensors can detect uh, gases such as CO2, O2, and uh, alcohol. But in this case, we are using this one for detecting methane. It's an NQ4. We use it in uh, um, farms, uh, barns, for detecting levels of uh, methane. NQ4 measuring volatile organic compounds is shown in the following video. Another sensor that you will find uh, in this box is the color sensor. Very useful in industry. Uh, this one will measure the maturity of uh, uh, fruits, uh, intensity of color in uh, leaves, as well in the poultry industry for measuring uh, the quality of eggs. The color sensor measures red, green, and blue reflected white from all this as shown in the video. Another sensor that we will find in our box is the validity sensor. This one measures the quality of water. Uh, we use it in agriculture for testing quality in our farms, lakes, or for the water that enters the drinking. Here we show the validity sensor monitoring the quality of water. So another sensor that we will find in our box is the infrared sensor. This one detects absolute temperatures in crops to see that the quality of the plant. And well, it's some excellent obstacle amendments for a uh, plant. So let's take a look to the next sensor, which is the half-pick sensor. This one is used in agriculture for uh, checking the half-pick in cattle. The public sensor is shown in the video, making the story and the story to the party. Our last sensor is a pH. This is an example of a pH sensor. Uh, we use a generator to measure the pH. 
and you will see all her water in soil. By placing the water uh, inside the water or the soil, you can get levels of the uh, pH and the conditions in the state in this. The pH sensor is my favorite. We replace the newspaper in the chemistry labs. Okay, so that is the demonstration of from the box. Yes. So there again. So give yes. Uh, yes. Oh, oh, I just want to inform our viewers that Peter Haydock and Isabel Mendiola are both authors of the Arduino Classroom. So all the the experiments that you have seen, the projects you have seen, they have been, done it their, on their own. So they are the authors of the Arduino Classroom. And we know that it's so difficult. If not, I have not even seen a, a curriculum. So we have done a curriculum for Arduino Classroom. And they are the authors of that. And uh, they're all they're also from um, Wisconsin, USA. So it's very early in the morning there, and uh, they're trying to come in into the to the studio. We hope that they'll be successful. If uh, if in case that their internet um, is still very weak at this point, we'll proceed with Jen and Dominic for the Tinkercad, and uh, we will call them again for question and answers in about an hour. I think their internet is uh, not very stable at the moment. Having so, problems. yes, let's proceed. Yes, so Peter Haydock and Isabel Mendiola will be joining us in in a, in about an hour after the uh, Tinkercad presentation of Jen and Dominic. So take it away. Okay, so for all of our uh, participants for today's webinar, we ask you to have your questions. If you have questions, you can just put that in the comment box here at uh, FB page and also with the uh, YouTube channel, okay? So we can show to uh, our uh, first speaker the question so that they may answer. Okay, Mam Jen? So let us introduce Mam Jen, our speaker. Mam Jen. Hello, Ayan. Uh, so um, we were uh, going to remind first those who are watching us live in Facebook, if you will, you can allow StreamYard so your name will be uh, displayed in our comment box. And so, therefore, we can ad address you directly. Ano? Kasi ang lumalabas po sa amin ay Facebook user. All right. So, today is another episode 
na we have two consecutive episodes on automation. So now we are going to focus on um, smart cities. What are the components of the smart cities? Yung mga pinakita po sa inyo is um, more on what Arduino parts are we using dun sa ating classroom. And then uh, Dominic will share you his... Um, set up and we'll also discuss with you on how to teach it if you don't have the kits yet he will be discussing using tinkercad and um, another site okay so before we proceed with uh, sir dominic salis let me share with you my screen Sir wax okay. screen? Oh, sorry wait long Ayan. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna show you a short video first. What is the automation and what is its role in the smart cities of the future? Okay, Sir Wax, my full, uh, full screen. Hindi ko na kayo nagkikita. Pwede pa, pa, ako pala, half pala, Sir Wax. Para kita ko. Ito na ba ako? My screen and myself. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so meron tayo kanina. Uh, lakihan, liitan natin to para nakikita natin. Kanina nag-demonstrate si Miss Isabel ng ating mga smart cities, no? So, ang um, topic for the for today is uh, Series 3, the role of automation in transforming our community. So, when you have, um, have samples at home, hindi naman kailangan na super super mamahali, no? So, I have here a sample na madali nyong mapapurchase na parang sa mga batang maliliit like uh, automated uh, solar motion sensor light. So, ito yung sample. So, pag tinakpan ko, yan, medyo nakakasilaw. So, you can introduce um, so, so, yung sa so sustainability natin sa unang-unang part sa Series 1, ito yung mga sample gadgets na madali nyo ma mapapakita. And we can always uh, make use of these para makatch yung attention. So, we get the attention of the students and make them more interested in the topic. So, this is one. And we have a lot of uh, samples we can choose from na we can already get locally. Ano? So, dito sa ating presentation sir wax we have i have my powerpoint in full now. okay so smart cities um the role of automation in transforming our community in the video we saw earlier there are uh, prerequisites smart cities will not work without 
IOTs and without automation, they come hand in hand. So as engineering careers, automation and robotics engineering are involving several areas. So we have electricians and mechanics, they combine together. That's why the course Mechatronics came about. It's a combination of electrical, mechanical, software, hardware, and infrastructure. So each of them play a major role in this uh, complex area of the engineering process. The role of the roboticists and the automation engineers is to design, build, and maintain the machines. Marani entry point, it's open to any kind of character. So from uh, starting um, tech book graduates to PhD graduates, there are jobs waiting for them. Robots have four, four elements. We have the mechanical part, the electrical part, hardware infrastructure, and software. In this webinar, we will have the hardware and software samples uh, earlier we had gearbox uh, so demonstrated us how to use the gearbox kit the arduino curriculum in integrating it in the classroom later sir dominic will show us the the online the tinkercad version in another software he will introduce later this um the benefit of having this kind of discussion in the classroom and a class in a, in a subject in the classroom is automation and robotics is within the emergency services na ngayon. It also involves military and medical operations, not just uh, being part of the smart cities, but a major component in transforming our community. So some people are confused. Is automation IOT or Internet of Things or is IOT the automation? So automation is just a tiny part of IOT. It doesn't mean that you have automation. It's always the IOT. You have um, automation as part of the IOT and most likely the um, parang byproduct na nga lang siya. So we have uh, different types of automation. Uh, one common is the home automation and some of those we can remotely control as we can use our mobile devices. We also have um, industry partners that uses automation to speed up the processes. What are the benefits of um, IoT and automation combined? Some people are con confused that uh, these automations and IOTs are removing jobs or like lessening jobs for human. It actually is uh, generating a different type of job. It's not actually wiping down the human resources. Now we, we do have, we do need humans to operate on the machines and set things up. So it involves uh, reducing costs. Uh, you can even do it work from home. It improves um, quality. It increases uh, production. It's improving satisfaction. And of course, we reduce carbon footprints. There are crucial elements in the smart city development. First is the smart industry. Then we have smart technology, smart management, and smart services. Okay, so the sensors which were shown earlier are taking a major responsibility in uh, making the connection possible for specific communication and information exchange. So in the automation, you will see how these sensors help in gathering data, which is really important as the data is used for to trigger or as conditions to make sure that the automation will work as expected and as programmed, okay? The, this helps to locate, monitor, and track, and manage, and enable smart recognition on everything. So sa mga houses, uh, there are a lot. Uh, if you look at the picture, there are um, outdoor uh, flash sirens. We have PIR detectors, and we have uh, magnetic door sensors, and 
a lot more. What are important is uh, security, not just in security in terms of our people uh, going in your house unallowed. It's also on what if you leave your houses and you are traveling, you don't know how safe it is anymore because of the change in weather. There might be changes in the total condition of the houses. So we have uh, triggers that will allow us to make sure that the house is safe, whether there are people in it or not. Okay. In the streets, we have smart infrastructure. So our city uh, has to have smart infrastructures as we go with the trend. We have smart lighting. Uh, smart lighting helps authorities keep track of the use of light in real time. So most of the streets now have their uh, solar powered street lights, but some has more complicated lighting facilities. So this is one example where there is it is a cloud based um, control system where authorities will just turn on or off specific uh, lights. Okay, there are some that are more uh, advanced as it optimizes illumination. For example, if you look at the picture, uh, the lights will be brighter when it's closer to the moving object as it's saving energy on the ends like the first on the first picture above you have 20 percent as it's farther from the car it's 100 percent as the car is right across or adjacent to the street light and it's darker when it's not yet coming towards the end of the other light okay for the picture at the bottom you're seeing since uh there's a person in the lower left hand corner is 80 percent because uh, i think the idea is the person is smaller than the car therefore it doesn't need that bright bright light as it only occupies a smaller space and of course it's darker as it it's not reaching the third the fourth and fifth lights yet so darker and bright and uh, darker when it's sparse, uh, brighter when it's closer to the light. Okay. The next uh, part of, so that is the smart lighting. The next part is connected smart streets. So if you cut, look at the photos, the, the devices are fetching data about road works, traffic, and blockage. So merong mga vehicle sensors, and it's uh, triggered by the sense the cloud-based infrastructure also my gps and it's locating where the vehicle is at and it's telling you uh, somebody pressed on the the pedestrian uh, button that says uh somebody will be crossing so the lights will be triggered something like that so it's managing people and resources and making public transport more efficient okay there also are smart parking management. So smart parking management helps uh, find vacant spots for parking a vehicle at various public places. So if you're going to look at the photo again, you're, you're seeing that uh, it's telling you, uh, it's giving information on which one is uh, vacant and which one is not. So on the photo, it's on the street itself, on the side okay this system is based on in-ground vehicle detection sensor so wireless sensors transmit information regarding the time and duration for which a parking spot is used okay so no congestion here because the people will know if there is free parking or not and if you are trying to find a good spot to park it's going to give you information Okay, these references I found here. So, um, if you have uh, questions, you can ask us on the chat. I don't see you yet. I'll, I'll look at the, the chat, the comment box later, and I will try to answer your questions. Okay, so for Sir Dominique, he will be introducing us 
how to teach it in the classroom and he will give you a demo okay sir wax let's see sir dom Ayan. Hi, Sir Dom. Good afternoon. Hello, Hello. good afternoon, Ma'am Jen, and good afternoon to everyone watching here right now. Mm -hmm. Yan. Palapit konti yung, yung ano, cam. Medyo maliit, no? Okay. Okay, so, today, Sir Dominic Salis will uh, demo us, no? Will, uh, he will be uh, demonstrating the Arduino, uh, how to use the Arduino. Tama ba? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. That's correct. So oh, we'll be using, uh, for the first part of the demonstration, we'll be using Tinkercad. And then at the end of the demonstration, right after using Tinkercad, uh, we'll be, I'll be demonstrating on how to use the actual Arduino kit, which is, um, I'm going to use Arduino Mega and some LED here, soil moisture and water uh, sensor. Uh, to demonstrate how these things works in an actual Arduino kit, okay? So, uh, Mom Jen, are you still there? Yes. <laughs> okay, may question po tayo dito kanina, no? Sabi po ni ano, Mom Bilen, uh, may, uh, if I need to open Tinkercad to go along with the lecture. Oo nga. Uh, we suggest you open it na because it's not uh, some internet connections are slow maybe when you you try to, as as it's ready na so you can try to uh, access is it there so for those who are new sir wax uh, i will uh, send you the link so they will just click in the comment box no tama ba okay okay wait lang Hello, Ma'am Jen. Shall we start the demonstration? Start. Yes, Pa. All right. So, once again, good afternoon, everyone, to all the viewers uh, out there in YouTube and in here in Facebook. Um, I am Dominic Sales, and uh, I'll be demonstrating on how to use uh, Tinkercad as an online simulation tool to create uh, basic Arduino programs and design uh, basic circuits using uh, Arduino programs. Okay, so for you to be able to to follow the demonstration, um, I want you to log to to open your uh, browser in your computer if you you have your tablet or your computer with you right now. Kindly open um, www.tinkercad.com. As you can see in my screen, um, I think uh, I'll be sharing my screen right now. So can, um, can you see my screen, Ma'am Jen? Uh, just a confirmation. Yes. Yes, I see it. Okay, cool. Okay. And, then, now, and then yung link nasa ano na din, comment. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this is uh, Tinkercad. We're in, uh, it offers a lot of um, really good stuff, features. So you can create 3D designs, you can create circuits, code blocks, and of course, we have also the lesson here. So which means to say it's like a Google Classroom. But for today's session, uh, I'll be focusing on the use of circuits. So make sure to create your free personal account here in Tinkercad for you to be able to do that. Of course, you need to have your working email, okay? And then create or, or create a personal account here in Tinkercad. So I'll be demonstrating demonstrating now how are we going to use Tinkercad as um, a replacement of an actual Arduino kit. Or for example, we don't have the actual Arduino kit, then we can still do coding and robotics. Still, we can program design uh, circuits using, of course, this amazing Tinkercad here, okay? So um, if you have your account ready, so maybe we can start with the demonstration now make sure that we have the same screen as you can see now. So make sure to click circuits 
okay, here. And of course, we need to create a new circuit, okay? Um, if you're new to, to Tinkercad, and if you want to make sure that you have the same screen, you simply click the logo here, the Tinkercad here, the logo uh, in my upper left corner, you can see. So just simply click that icon or the logo there, and then you'll be able to see this um, uh, friendly dashboard in my screen, okay? So, so that we have the same screen later on, okay? So simply click this or select this, and then select circuits, and then let's create a new circuit, okay? So press create new circuit, okay? For the first part of this demonstration, I'll be discussing with you um, the, the environment of Tinkercad, of course, and also after that, uh, just a quick review on the structure of an Arduino program. Okay, so ano nga ba yung meron sa isang Arduino program? I think it's very important for us to, to know the basic structure of an Arduino program, okay? And after that, I'm going to teach you how to use the serial monitor and of course, we will use the LED, uh, the resistors, and other sensors, okay? And after sensor, I'll be demonstrating how to create or how to use the servo and potentiometer. Right after the servo, uh, I'll be using the distance sensor or, or the ultrasonic distance sensor. And at the end of uh, the demonstration, I'll be demonstrating how to, do, to, how to create circuits using the actual Arduino key. Okay, so I hope you have your uh, Tinkercad open now so that we have the same screen. So this is the environment of Tinkercad. As you can see here, it's very easy. You can see just here in my, um, in my screen, right corner of my screen, you can see the different components available. So these are all the basic components available in Tinkercad. Take note, these are just the basic components, okay? Which means to say that Tinkercad offers a lot of um, components here. You simply select the basic here, and you can see the components here, okay? So all components, okay? If you want to see all the different uh, available components here, right? There. So these are the different um, available components, okay? So it's up to you to navigate all of these components later on. We'll just go back to basic, okay? So, so on my right part of my screen, these are the components. And you can see here, for you to be able to create a code or, or, or add a code in your circuit, make sure to click the code here, okay? Uh, for the meantime, we can see the editor because we don't have a circuit or we don't have a design yet, okay? So yeah, so simply press code here if you want to create the program. And of course, if you want to simulate or if you want to see the actual output of your circuit or, or if you want to run your program and see the output, then you simply press here to start simulation, of course, okay? And then of course, if you want to edit, go back to your circuit design or go back to your code, you simply click again to start simulation or to this stop simulation here, okay? Here you can see the fabulous dancer Fofi. This is actually the file name. It's quite weird, but you can actually change the file name here. You simply double click, and then you can type the your desired file name. For example, this is Falta Das Arduino Demo. You can rename whatever uh, name you wanted. Okay, so Falta Das Arduino Demo, and then simply click anywhere in your screen to uh, activate the new file name of your um, Arduino program, okay? And of course, um, here we have the rotate. If you want to rotate your components later on your sensors and your board, you simply select the component. And then of course, click this icon for you to be able to rotate or change the orientation of your component. And here we have also the delete icon, wherein if you have um, uh, components, unnecessary components, accidentally added uh, unnecessary components, then of course you need to select the component and then simply press delete in your keyboard or uh, click this icon here, okay? Also we have the redo and undo, okay? And we have also here the annotation and of course the view and hide, okay? Here we have also the export. If you're done with your program, of course you can actually export your circuit design. And at the same time, you can export the program, okay? You can also share your circuit or your um, or your document, okay? So you just you simply type the name of your or the email of your um, the one that you want to to share with your 
to share your um, uh, document, then you simply uh, type the, the email address, okay? And I think so much with the environment of Tinkercad. Right now, I'm just waiting for Ma'am Jen uh, if I'm, I'll continue with the demonstra demonstration or we have some questions. Ma'am Jen, do we have some questions with the environment of Tinkercad or we proceed yeah. with the demonstration? So uh, for so we have um, interactive learning today, and we, we we can check if we're too fast or too slow or just fine. Uh, I invite everyone to go to if you have the app or you have an, you can click to another you can split your screen for the browser, para lang we can check if you can follow. Please, uh, Sir Wax placed in the Socrative student login you don't need to sign up or anything just go to the virtual classroom name is virtual math okay virtual math so we will be asking kasi you cannot respond right away as we are live now no so i will be asking and then you will just say uh good 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 or something and then we'll know if you're ready or not if we reach at least um if I reach at least 50% the on week or 70% of the participants, we can proceed with the next one, another DOM, so we can check. So yes, while waiting, while waiting uh, for you to get started, I know some of your internet connections are not that fast. We will uh, wait for you. And yeah, we. how many simulations are we going to need sir dom or do we just use one one file or or patong patong ba yon? or add we add do we add on or we use the same board uh i'm going to use at uh, the same board but uh -huh. i uh strongly recommend for our viewers to create a new document or new file for them to be able to have a copy of their previous file and so uh, we do encourage you to do that. So, uh, for example, what's the first uh, sensor we're using, sir? Um, the first part of the, the demonstration would be, uh, it will focus on the serial monitor followed by the LED. And, of course, we have here the uh, sample sensor here, the ultrasonic distance sensor. Okay, so uh, we recommend that you use... Um, and ba? You have the file name to be the sensor, so you know which file. Because you can always create a new file, and it's easy to grab the board and the uh, breadboard, right? ID and the breadboard. Okay. So wait lang. Uh, I'm signing in. I can't even sign in on my own. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can check uh, if you are ready. Okay, Ma'am Jen, sir, Tom, I already the uh, activity for today. So sa mga participants po natin, you may go to a uh, YouTube channel and proceed to the login sa httpsb.socrative.com login student mm -hmm. and then the Yeah, I already have I have two students there already. I think there are how many viewers na? Yan. But if you're using your ano lang, your phone, it's fine po. Don't Don't stress. Okay, so just just for those who can, so we can and and wants to let us know if you're ready or not, uh, kindly uh, go to Socrative.com student login and then the classroom name is virtual math no space all caps. Did you post it in the comment box? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I will try to put a question. Uh, I'm, my question is, are you ready? And uh, let's see if people will respond. I have two students. <laughs> I, to st I only have two students. I, I am not sure if I will see some answers. Okay, I have... Yes, okay, I got one. <laughs> okay, I have one student who said yes. Ayan. So this is how we know that you're out of my two students who were able to successfully go in the virtual classroom. 
Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, I got two out of two. So I have two students, those who were not able to follow. Sir Wax, can you pin the link and the and the classroom name doon sa ating banner? Ayun na pala. Okay, can you add the classroom name is virtual math? Okay, we'll wait for you. I think you can start na, Sir Dom. Baka maiwan tayo. I will keep it open. Okay, cool. Thank you. So, thank you, Sir. Thank you, Ma'am Jen. And thank you, Sir uh, Wax. So, again, guys, let's continue our, with our demonstration on how can we use uh, Tinkercad. Okay, so um, first, let's try to add an Arduino Uno R3 board in our... Um, we're playing here. Simply select the Arduino Uno board here and drop this microcontroller, microcontroller in our uh, Tinkercad space here. So as you can see in my screen, the Arduino Uno board is quite complicated. But, you know, if you have a um, background using this Arduino Uno, a basic background, then it will be a plus on your part. So just a quick uh, review on the parts of the Arduino Uno. You can see here the different digital... Um, pins here on the upper part of the Arduino board, you can see the digital pins, okay? We have the GND, which means that's the negative pin. On, we have also the 1312 up to zero. These are all the digital pins we have. Also, we have here the red button here. This one is the reset button, okay? So once you press this button here, uh, that means to say that all the program uh, inside your Arduino board will, be, will go back to zero and it will be uh, no reset. Okay, but the, the program don't worry, the program won't uh, will not be deleted. Also, we have here on the lower part of our, our screen, we have the different pins, the digital the, in the upper, uh, upper uh, here, upper or lower corner of our screen. We have the analog pins, we have A0 to analog 5, we have also the VIN, the GND, the 5V, and the 3.3, and the reset, and then the IO, uh, IO ref. Also, we have here the USB um, port, and also we have the jack here to power our Arduino, okay? So going back to our demonstration, the first part of this is let's try to create a basic circuit using an LED, okay? Let's try to power up an LED using this um, small board here. So first, we need to add a breadboard in our um, editor here. So simply select the breadboard and then drop the breadboard in your editor, okay? So we have the breadboard right now. As you can see in my screen, if I'm going to mouse over or, or, or to select um, pins here, you can see that there is a small um, green uh, circles here connected to each other. That means to say that this group is actually, this is actually a group and they are connected to each other, okay? The same with this power uh, bus here. You can see if I'm going to select one um, pin here, then everything will be selected. That means to say it's a group, okay? So, yeah. And, of course, let's try to add a resistor here, okay? So, a resistor is simply um, the functionality of resistor is to simply um, control the flow of the electricity or the voltage, okay? So, let's try to add this resistor and let's connect this resistor in our breadboard considering the pin... We have here the D5 and we have also the F5 here. Make sure it's in on D5 and F5 for the meantime. But I'm going to discuss, of course, the importance of having a clean uh, circuit design in, in Tinkercad, okay? And, of course, we have the LED. We need to add an LED, okay? So simply look for the LED here and then drop the LED here, okay? And let's zoom in, okay? So we have two legs. You can see the cathode and the anode. Okay, if we say cathode, this means to say that um, cathode is simply the negative pin or the negative leg from your LED. And of course, the anode is actually the positive um, leg from your LED. Okay, so let's select this LED and rotate. Okay, let's rotate this. Okay, on my upper left uh, corner of my screen, you simply click this icon here. Make sure that your LED is selected and let's rotate this LED here until such time that the orientation is um, something like this, okay? 
and then move your LED, okay? Making sure that our cathode is connected to our negative pin or negative hole here in our breadboard, like this. So you can see in my screen, this is the cathode is connected to the um, fifth pin of our uh, from our um, breadboard. Okay, and also we have the anode with which is the positive, make sure to connect that in our breadboard here. In It's up to you if you want to connect this to A5 or B5 or C5, as long as they are aligned together, which means to say, since we connected our resistor a while ago in B5, then our LED should also be connected under this column, okay? Which means to say it should be on the column of number five. So let's try to use A5 for the meantime, okay? All right, so we have successfully connected the, the positive leg from our LED going to our A5 from our breadboard. The next thing to do is to make sure that we power, we power up our breadboard by simply adding an extra wire here on the first hole from our uh, breadboard. You simply click this okay you can see the the wire this is the the wire okay and then connect this wire in our gnd so gnd means negative okay we can also change the color of our wire you simply select the wire and then you can see here the color you can we can change it to black okay um it's always proper to change the color of our wires so proper wiring code is really um, important Okay, so black since it's uh, negative, okay? And we need to connect our resistor or our, our LED to the digital pins from our Arduino. So let's try to use 13 for the meantime, okay? And let's connect this wire here in our J5. Now, um, going back, make sure that everything is, okay? You can see in my screen it's in the same line or it's in the same column. As you can see, we use five here, A5, D5, F5, and also here we have the J5. So everything should be aligned together, okay? Once done, we can actually proceed with the program, okay? So just simply click the code here, okay? So select the code, and then you can see here we have here the blocks, but we're not going to use blocks. Select the blocks, and then there's a drop-down list. Just simply select text, okay? So select text, and then press continue, okay? Select text, and then continue. All right. So maybe I'll pause for five seconds. Let's wait for the viewers. Okay. Ah, so sorry, I, I was muted. Hold on, hold on, uh, Sir Dong. So, and I already have six students in the classroom. So, Miss uh, Miss Lori Bell said no. I asked them, "Are you done wiring?" Any questions? So, Miss uh, Lori Bell said no because I can't access the link. So, if you are talking about the Tinkercad link, Sir Wax, can we uh, repost the Tinkercad link for? uh maybe because uh okay so mb got it so we have one out of seven i already have seven students uh one is done yes so i have two yeses and one okay sir wax said yes but i'm telling you to do it first put the link sir wax before you do the activity you are the moderator <laughs> okay <laughs> Sir Wax, uh, repost Tinkercad link po, please. Sa, ano, sa comment box, so they will just click on it. Ayan. Oh. Yeah, okay. Sir Wax already uh, posted the link. You just have to click it. And then, uh, thank you to the seven people who are trying to talk to me. Okay. Atomo said yes. Okay. Done wiring. I'm waiting for two more students. Three more. Okay. Very good. I love uh, that I can. Okay, Donnie. Donnie says yes. Okay, one more student left. Sir 
Her dom is look. It looks like this is how we're going to teach in the beginning of the school year, no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think we can proceed with. We're on the coding na, right? Okay. So, All right. Miss Maribel, madali lang po yan. We'll we'll wait for you can uh, comment if you are still having difficulties in our YouTube live. Thank you. Bye, Sir Dom. Go ahead na. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Jen, and thank you, Sir Wax. Um, going back to our demonstration, guys, you can see now that there is an actual code provided. Well, actually, we did do this, but this is the default program given to us by the Tinkercad so that we can start doing the programming part, okay? So you can see under here, we have the void setup and void loop, okay? When we say void setup, this means to say that this is the actual, you know, the first part we're in... Um, we declare everything like the, the pin assignment, the variables, initialization, or whatever um, components we used, okay? We have used, no? So under void loop, this means to say that our program, whatever the program is, when it's inside our void loop, then it will run repeatedly, continuously. As long as our um, Arduino or our microcontroller board is on or power on, okay? So... These are the two important parts of an Arduino program. We have the void setup and void loop. Now, here we can see that the, there is an actual program, which is pin mode 13 camera output. This is uh, given to us by the Tinkercad. So we didn't do this again. It's pin mode 13. Pin mode means uh, it's the pin assignment, okay, that we use. You can see here, there is a 13 here, which means to say this is the digital pin we used a while ago. Okay, and output means because we used an LED, then it should be output because an LED, you know, nag -e emit ng light yung LED natin. So, nag on nag off then it should be output, okay? So, kung ang, ang, ang component natin, if our component is actually accepting um, values, then it should be an input. Pero kapag nag-provide ng, ng output or numbers, then it should be a digital component, okay? So, yun pong panagkaiba ng output and input, okay? Then also, do not forget the semicolon here, which means to say this line is a single statement, okay? Under void loop, we have here the digital write 13 high, delay 1000, which means you can see here this is a comment, it's a guide, which means to say the first two lines, it will turn on our LDT, okay? So, kung ano man yung nakalagay sa pin 13 natin, then automatic na i-on niya. So nasaan yung on? Here, we have the high. Okay, we have the high here. It's digital right because we use the digital pin 13. You can see in our design, we have used the digital pin 13 here. Okay, so you can see the label here. It's digital. Okay, that's why it's digital uh, right 13 high. Okay, and the last two lines here, we can see that it's digital right 13 low, which means to say turn off our LED for one second. So the output of this program will actually, is actually um, the LED will turn on and turn off, turn on and turn off for every single second, okay? So let's try to simulate the program by simply pressing this start simulation here so that we can see the final output, okay? Now you can see that my LED is actually turning on and turn off. It will turn on and turn off at the same time. The reason behind this is we have the correct program and we have the correct circuit design. Everything is connected and in our program, everything is uh, written. Okay, we have pin 13, we have digital write high and digital write 13 low. Now, in case we want to edit or we want to transfer the pin assignment of our LED and we wanted to use digital pin 8, Okay, let's say digital pin 8. Then we simply stop simulation. Okay, again, we simply press stop simulation for us to be able to edit our program. Okay, and then let's go back to our um, circuit. I'm just going to zoom in. And in case we want to change pin 13 here, we simply delete this wire. Okay, select the wire and then press delete in your keyboard or simply press this icon here. Okay, it's the same. Now, let's try to use 8, digital 8, 
and then connect this thing in our breadboard J5. Okay. Again, we deleted the initial wire, which is connected to pin 13. And now we have used the digital pin 8. Okay. So make sure it's connected to J5, the same column again. And then going back to our code, we simply press code here. Okay. Click. And then remember, we use digital pin 8. Okay. That's why we need to change 13 here. We simply press 8 in our keyboard. Okay. So pin mode 8 come output. And then, of course, we need to change 13 also here. Type 8. 13 here. Type 8. Make sure everything, every digital pin is actually the same. All right. So we declare pin mode 8 cam output. And then we have used digital write 8 high and digital write 8 low. Then we can now go back to our start simulation. Okay. And then let's see if this LED is still working. Now you can see my LED is still working because we have the correct pin. And we also declared the correct pin assignment under void setup. And under void loop, we have the correct pin assignment also, which is 8. So that is the basic part or the basic uh, Arduino program. Okay. So I hope you can still follow. Okay. This is just the basic part. We will move on to the next part, which is the serial, how to use the serial monitor using this, of course, uh, Tinkercad. But before I proceed with the demonstration on how to do that, let's just have a quick um, uh, uh, review of what we have done so far. Let's just ask uh, Mom Jen Lu. Mom Jen, do we have questions from our viewers? Okay, so back to the virtual math. I have another question. It's a true or false question. Click true if you were able to see that your LED is lighting up, okay? Oh, ang bilis. True daw, yeah, hey. So earlier, we had we had eight students, no? Seven of them got it working. So meron tayong uh, ilang percent ba yun? Wait lang, magko-calculator ako. Okay, 88% of our uh, students got it correct. And now we have... Uh, are are they working because sometimes um if you just draw it and you did not wire it correctly madaya tingnan sir dom no i i want to know if it's actually working because sometimes like like the small tiny green on the anode leg of the led they always forget to put that onto the breadboard in the tinkercad so uh it's not it's not uh, connected so it should be working so far there are five students who answered true okay so i think we are having uh progress here 63 percent so my target always is 85 percent and above that's the passing grade for my for me as a teacher so 85 percent of the students should be able to do that okay no child left behind okay well uh it's still live and then we'll proceed and later we'll check if others were able to do it maybe there's three more who are trying or trying to troubleshoot okay you can uh move on sir dong okay cool thank you mom jen so going back to our demonstration we are done with the first part which is the led basic program and we proceed with the second part, which is um, I'm going to show you how can we use the serial monitor to display text. Then right after that, we are going to use the, the sensor and, of course, the potentiometer and the servo. So I'm going to stop simulation now. And I'll add a new code, which is the serial. That begin. 9,600 here. Okay. So this thing here will actually it acts like a bridge a connection between our arduino board and our um computer okay this is the baud rate the serial that begin 9600 9600 again is the baud rate okay and here under void loop we can simply type serial 
at print ln and then let's try to add um salta dash arduino demo okay. so we have here um serial that print ln salta dash arduino demonstration this means to say that whatever is inside this the the quotation marks or the, the quotations then it will be displayed in our screen okay the reason behind this is because we have called this a function serial that begin or serial that print ln to display the text okay so whatever text is inside these two quotation marks here then it will be displayed in our screen later on okay now i'm going to remove this code also this one all right and delay Try to uh, delay 1,000 here. So, and then let's try to run or start simulation. Okay. Now, for us to be able to see the output, we simply click this arrow facing up arrow here on my lower right corner of the screen, of my screen. And then you can see now that I have this felt as Arduino demonstration text printed every second, all right? So you can see that Felta does Arduino demonstration. I hope that is clear for everybody, okay? So you can see the code. We have declared serial that begin 9,600 and serial that print L and Felta does Arduino demonstration, okay? So whatever is inside the quotation marks, then it will be simply displayed in our screen, okay? So for example, stop simulation, I'm going to add another text. We copy this thing and print. And maybe we can type here, hello world. This famous line, hello world. And then let's try to start simulation again. And clear. And you can see there's a felt Arduino demonstration and then the text, hello world. So every second, uh, felt uh, the Arduino demonstration will be printed, then another second hello world will be printed. So that's how you use a serial monitor to print text in Tinkercad. I hope everyone can still follow. Let's try to ask Mam Jen. Do we have questions from our viewers right now? Uh, wait now. So earlier, Seven out of nine is working. So yung dalawa, nawawala. <laughs> okay, try ulit. True or false? Ulit ang aking question. Were you able to see the uh, feed from the serial monitor? So if you are confused, kasi medyo maliit, Sir Dom, no? So that's print line. So that's print lowercase l. Hindi po yan yeah. one. That's the common error kasi when they type. That's Serial dot print ln. Tama. And then remember to put the quotation marks. Okay. And of course, ang mahiwagang semicolon. If there's no semicolon, then it's not going to work. Okay. So I think they're still working. We'll give you one more minute. Okay. I have two students who got it. Already, I have nine na. Oh, padami. Every time we open, we're adding two people. So, by the end of the class, probably get them all in. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's great. We have students who can actually um, follow our demonstration right now. So, yes. that's pretty quite good. Okay. Yeah, three. I done can na. see here in our... Uh, Live session right now, we have um, viewers in our YouTube channel and also in Facebook. So I hope, guys, you can, um, can it's free. You can actually uh, join the classroom, Socrative classroom. Okay, you simply type b.socrative.com, log in, slash login, slash student, and type uh, the code. I think the code is uh, virtual math. Yeah. Okay. 
So, shall we proceed, Ma'am Chen, with the next part? Okay. Uh, wait, do they have to uh, save us now or can they still use the same plate? Yeah, they can use the same um, file, but then it's up to them, Ma'am, to create uh, a new file if they wanted to. Okay, okay. Just make it. Right. Okay, sir. Thank you. See you later. Okay. So, going back to our demonstration, we're done with this, the LED and the serial monitor. And for this second part or, or third part of the demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use a servo. Okay? So, ano nga ba tong servo? Usually, ang servo ginagamit to, to, it's like a motor, it's like a DC motor. Okay? Ginagamit, ginagamit to usually to automate or to, yeah, tama, to automate things like yung kamay ng robot. So, ang Ang servo, usually, madalas nakikita sa kamay ng robot. Ang servo, madalas nakikita rin sa in malls. Okay? Where in, uh, if you top in, okay? Let's say, for example, you're an employee and meron tinatawag na turnstile. Okay? If you top in, if you enter the mall or your, your office, for example, meron yung turnstile na magbubukas. So, ang gamit po doon is like a servo. Okay? So, nag-automate siya. Okay? So, now, I'm going to create a new file. May, I think, I need to create a new file, okay? So for us to be able to create a new file, you simply click the logo of Tinkercad, okay? Don't worry. Everything will be automatically saved, okay? Once na exit tayo sa mismong um, editor natin, automatic yun na nasa save, okay? So yan, click lang po natin yung logo ng Tinkercad. And you can see now the latest uh, file that we have uh, created a while ago. We have here the Falta Dash Arduino demo. So, which means to say it's actually saved. Okay. Then now let's create a new circuit. All right. So, again, create a new circuit. Simply press create new circuit. Okay. There. So, we have a blank space right now. And let's try to add um, a servo, an Arduino Uno, and of course, a breadboard. Okay. So, here. Let's look for the Arduino. Simply select the Arduino Uno R3 and drop it in our uh, drag and drop in our editor. And of course, we need a breadboard. Look for the breadboard here. Okay. Select and then drop in our editor. And next, we have the micro servo. Select and drop here in our editor. Okay. Um, I'm just going to rotate this thing. All right, there you go. So, yeah. So this is our servo. This is a 90 degree servo, okay? You can see in my screen, there are actually three wires. We have the orange one, the red and the brown, which means to say that this thing here, this wire is actually the negative and the red is positive and then this is the pin out. Okay, it should be connected to the digital pin, okay? Let's just wait for our viewers. Yes, Ma'am Jen? Um, Ayan, wait, wait lang. Yeah, let's wait because I, I even did it myself and I just had the uh, servo in. So if I can uh, do it that fast and then they... Those who are beginners should be able to do it times two or three the time. Yes, okay. Correct. So do they on, they only need one micro servo, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, cool. So we just need so uh for convenience, uh you don't have to follow us. No, because you sometimes their screen are small dom, so they cannot uh, see it in landscape. You can always put the breadboard below the yep. or yeah. the uno board no so yes. which right. however comfortable you are you're the master you're the captain of your ship do it at your convenience and uh lay it out as as comfortable as you can be no but yes. make sure when we teach it in the classroom we always remind the students to clean your wires and always uh, color the wires so it's easier to troubleshoot yeah okay i'm going to ask again 
Um, true or false? If you are done laying it out, kindly say true. I got one, two. There are nine in the classroom. Seven are actually using the classroom. Two are... I just opened the classroom. So this is how good we have virtual math in. You can actually see. Sometimes they're there, but they're not there. It's the same as the actual classroom. They're physically present, but mentally absent. <laughs> okay. okay, so I have uh, one... I have uh, one student who are still working on it. They have, yeah. Okay. Let's wait for that one now. Okay. So we have six out of eight. So we're waiting for one more. Okay, 83%. Okay na yan, kahit kulang 2%. I can proceed to the next one. Okay. Laters. Okay, that's great. We have um, 83% according to Ma'am Jen. Now, we proceed with the actual code of this circuit. But before that, make sure we connect all the necessary wires, okay, in our Arduino. So, again, um, make sure we ha you have this uh, servo here, okay? Then, first, we need to connect, okay? this ground to our breadboard ground means negative then we need to connect this thing here in our negative okay i just changed the orientation of my uh, setup because as mentioned by mom jen so some of the viewers are actually using an ipad or tablet or cell phone okay and now since it's connected to our breadboard negative then we make sure to power also our uh, servo and make sure it's connected to our positive in our breadboard, just like this thing. And of course, do not forget to change the color of our wire and make it red if it's a positive. And if it's negative, it should be block. Okay. And of course, we should not forget also to connect G and E in our uh, um, breadboard. Okay. And also we have the five volts here, connect here and change the color. Sorry, it should be red. And this one should be black. Okay. I think it's already connected successfully. We have here the GND connected to GND here. The uh, positive connected to the positive of our servo. Then the next thing to do is of course, connect this signal to our digital pin, okay? So let's maybe choose um, digital pin 9. We can choose pin 9, okay? And no need to change the color of our wire, okay? Now, quick question. Does it matter if we choose 6, 7, or 8? Well, it doesn't matter what pin we you wanted to use, okay? As long as it's a digital pin. But are we going to declare uh, pin mode negative 9 in our program? The answer is no. Okay. Um, this sign here means that there is a specific uh, function of this certain um, pin mode or pin. Okay. Digital pin. So, for example, uh, gumamit kayo ng sensors, other components. So, once you plug in your sensor in this pin assignment or in this digital pin, automatic yun, na na-detect ng ating Arduino na kasabi niya, this component is this kind of sensor. Which means to say, my special function, yung mga sign po na na ganito. Okay? Meron siyang special na, na function. Okay? So, making sure that we have the correct wiring, let's have a quick review. We have the digital pin 9 connected to the orange or the signal. We have the red wire connected to the positive. We have the black wire which is the ground connected to our negative okay next thing to do is we proceed with the programming you press code and then again blocks make it text and then just press continue okay here you can see our default program 
but don't worry. We need you simply change the program. Okay. We remove this pin assignment here. We remove this code here. Okay. Now, since we use the servo, and that's a new component, we need to declare the library of our servo. To do that, we simply type the number sign followed by include uh, less than sign, and then we need to type the servo dot h, and then the closing or, or, or the greater than sign. Okay. Again, it's number sign include servo dot h. This means to say that since we're using a servo in the component, then we need to call the library for that particular component. Okay. Now we declare the name of our servo. It's like declaring a variable. It's a declaring component. So we need to use servo and then uh, think of a unique name for your servo. Let's say my servo and then followed by semicolon okay we have the my servo followed by uh servo my servo okay then under okay. void setup lang, sir dom. Saglit lang, sir dom. so uh there's a ayun, there's a question how to change orientation po okay just cool. lang, quick quick lang thank you how to change orientation for example you want to change the orientation of your uh servo you simply select the servo, and you can see here in my screen, upper uh, left corner, rotate here, okay? Click nyo lang po yan yung icon na yan, and then you can see po na nagbabago yung aking servo. Okay, you can see here. Ayan, nagro-rotate po siya. Ayan. I hope you were able to follow. Okay na po ba, ma'am, dyan? Yan, okay na, okay na. Thanks. Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, sorry, hindi ko kasi nakikita yung mismong chat. Um, yung mga questions. So, si Ma'am Jen yung nakakakita. Alright, so, sasabi lang ni Ma'am Jen kung stop, kung may mga katanungan po kayo. Well, if you have questions, um, type nyo lang po sa ating chat room or chat sa YouTube or sa Facebook. Now, going back to the code, simply select the code again. Since we're done with the declaration of our variable, we have here the server already. Then let's proceed with the, the void setup code. We need to declare the pin assignment of our servo. Remember that we use the digital pin 9. So we simply type my servo dot attach 9 followed by semicolon. This line. The meaning of this line is actually we are declaring the pin assignment of our servo, which is connected to pin 9. If we use a different pin assignment, then please change also the pin assignment line here. Kung ginamit niyo 8 or 7 or 10 or 11, it should be the same, okay, in your program, okay? My servo here is the same with the my servo here. A touch means it's actually attached, diba? connected to our, our Arduino. That's why it's my servo that attach. Under void loop, okay, here later on, we will type the program wherein our servo will repeatedly or continuously move, okay? But for the meantime, let's just type our code inside our void setup, okay? Now, to move our um, servo into a different degree angle, we simply type my servo dot right followed by our desired degree angle for example zero okay followed by semicolon okay and delay let's say 100 followed by semicolon okay so copy paste para lang makita natin na may changes my servo right let's say 50 Delay 100. Let's change this to delay 500. And then copy paste again. Going back to zero. Let's type delay 500 here. So ano yung kalalabasan ng ating program? Initial state of our servo. Since nakikita po natin yan, zero. Okay? 
And then after one, uh, 100 milliseconds, magmumove siya, 50 degrees. Delay, 500. After 500 milliseconds, magmumove siya going back to zero. That's for 500 milliseconds also. Okay? So try po natin na i-check kung nag-work ba yung program natin. So medyo kinakaba na ako, baka hindi mag-work. So start simulation natin. And there you go. You can see the movement of our servo. Stop simulation. Start simulation. You can see the movement of our servo. Very quick lang siya. Zero state. And then 50 degree, degrees. And then move going back to zero. So nagal lang po siya. So again, start simulation. Um, bakit po hindi siya nagmumove continuously? Why do we need to press stop simulation, start simulation? The reason behind this is because yung ating program po ay nakalagay sa void setup. Remember yung explanation natin a while ago that whatever is inside void setup, isang beses lang po niya i-run. Okay? Isang beses lang i-run. So paano natin makikita ulit? We need to reset the program. Or we need to simply press stop simulation. Using the actual Arduino kit, ipapas lang natin yung reset button, yung red na sinabi ko kanina ito. Para sa ganun, mag-work ulit yung ating program or gumana yung mismong gusto nating functionality. Now, kung gusto natin na paulit-ulit siya nag-move, then we simply remove our code and what shall we do? Put it inside our void loop. Okay? Lagay lang po natin sa loob ng ating void loop. And then now, simply start simulation. You can see now in my screen that my servo is actually moving continuously. Okay? So that's how you use a servo motor. It's the same even if it's at um, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or uh, continuous servo, or 360 degrees. The same po yun. Walang pinagbago. Okay? Ayan. So, moving na po yung ating servo. So, check lang po natin kung may mga katanungan from Ma'am Jen. Ma'am Jen, do we have questions from our viewers? Okay. Hold on. So, uh, there is none. So, if you go back to your uh, Socrative, I did put, uh, can you follow any questions? You can uh, you can follow. Say yes if you have questions. Type in your questions, please. Yeah. See, si Sir Wax, yes. <laughs> si Atomos, yes. Okay. Gonna, ano? Let's wait. So so far, wala, walang questions. I think they're practicing. And then if you uh, you can tweak, no? You can change the, what you call it, the angle. Okay. Yeah. The angle of the, and you can also practice with the delay. If you want it to move faster, you can uh, ano, decrease the number on the delay. If you want it to go slower, you can increase the number. Correct. So let's just show them, ma'am. No, um, yes. delay. Maybe we can make this one thousand. And for the delay here, let's make it around three thousand. And for the delay here, uh, let's stick with five hundred. And start simulation. Stay. So magistay po yung servo natin and that degree angle, ng ganung. Uh, time. So, yung interval niya is 3,000. So, mag-stay po siya ng ganun katagal. Okay? Ayan. Sir Dom, can you ano, zoom in daw? Because uh, ah, they me. can... Yeah, don't know the... the what you call it? The program, the code. Ayan, Ayan po. Okay na po kaya ito? Uh, yeah. May ilalaki pa ba yan? <laughs> Laki yan po it. Uh, You can... Um, I think I need to put this in Notepad. Yes, I think so. Right. Yeah, so for those uh, who can see it. Yeah, and I, can you see my screen now, ma'am? 
Notepad. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think they're good now. Okay. All right. So I think we're good with the servo. Um, yeah, no? Pwede na tayong um, yes, proceed sa next, no? Now, um, I'll be showing you how to control a servo manually. What if gusto natin na kinokontrol natin yung movement or yung pag-ikot ng servo? How to do that is going back to our um, main circuit design, we simply need to add a new component, which is the potentiometer. So hanapin po natin yung potentiometer sa ating um, components here. Okay? So potentiometer, here is our potentiometer. Okay? So parang ito yung tinatawag na, parang ano man <laughs> tamang term dito sa, sa pag, nakalimutan ko yung term, ma'am, dyan, yung potentiometer. I think familiar to sa mga ano, sa mga radio, na device. <laughs> Iniikot siya. Ayan. Oh, so, nababa po natin. No? So, potentiometer. Gagamitin po natin to to control our, our servo. Kung ano yung ikot ng ating potentiometer, susunod dapat yung ating servo. Okay? Simply, this is automation still. Okay? Kanina is um, autonomous. Now, gawin natin manual. Okay? So, ilagay natin si potentiometer sa ating breadboard. Okay? So, breadboard. Ilagay po natin dito. Maybe I can just rotate this one para paras po tayo ng screen later on. And then ilagay ko na siya dito. Okay? Ayan po. Ayan. Then again, meron pong tatlo na uh, wires na kailangan nakakonect sa ating, nakakonect yung ating mismo um, tawag doon potentiometer. Okay? Yung ating terminal 1, no? terminal 1, this should be connected to our ground or negative. Okay? So, click natin to, yung sumunod na butas, no? And then, connect this to our negative. Ito. Ayan. Change natin kagad yung color para hindi kayo malito. Again, black is negative. Ayan po. Connected po siya sa negative. Ito po siya. And, yung next po na kable is yung nasa gitna. Okay? Yung nasa gitna po, kailangan connected po siya sa mismong um, uh, analog na pin natin, okay? So, itong gitna natin, okay? Should be connected to our analog, okay? Ayan, don't be confused. Lalagay ko po siya sa analog zero. Medyo nag-overlap po tayo dito kasi yung orientation ng ating um, circuit, no? So, ayan. Change natin tong color neto. Gawin natin blue para maiba naman. Ayan po. Okay? So, nasa analog zero. And then lastly, we have the terminal two should be connected to positive. Ito. Ayan. Change natin to red. Ayan po siya. Refresh. Tatlong wires ang ginamit natin para sa ating potentiometer. Nirotate natin yung potentiometer natin. Terminal 1, yan po yung negative. Then should be connected to our negative sa ating breadboard. We change the color, the wire color to black. Yung nasa gitna, again, that's the signal or yung wiper natin, that should be connected to our analog, uh, uh, analog pin in our Arduino. So analog zero yung ginamit po natin. And lastly, we have the terminal two, should be connected to our positive wire or positive na, na breadboard natin, okay? So complete na natin yung wires. Then the next thing to do is to proceed with the program. So magpo-post muna ako ng mga maybe around... 20 seconds para makita niyo yung actual na circuit. And then, habang iniintay ko po kayo, okay? Ayan, pakita ko na po yung code natin, okay? Ayan. So, I think, ma'am, dyan, no? Okay naman tayo so far? Aha. Uh -huh. pa po ba si ma'am, dyan? Nakamute yeah, yung niya. code. Nakamute ako, sorry. Daldal ako ng daldal, nakamute pala. Okay, so they were saying bigger codes ulit, of course, yun pa rin. Uh, yes, yes. No question. Uh, they can follow. So, finish ko ulit. Tapos, bago ako. Okay. Alright. So, pwede na tayo mag-proceed, ma'am, no? 
Mm -mm. Yep. I, I have the live question on the virtual math classroom. No, if they can follow or they have questions, they can ask there also. So follow yes. through. Continue po. Okay, follow. Um, sundan nyo lang po ako, no? Now, um, simply delete this code here. Ito mga codes na ito, hindi na po natin kailangan to. Kasi ang gagawin natin, kailangan yung ating mismong servo ay gumagana sa pamamagitan ng pag-control sa ating um, potentiometer. Okay? So, dapat gagana yung ating servo gamit lamang ang potentiometer. Okay? So, check lang po natin yung ating... Do not forget to check yung ating analog zero here. Okay? So, yep. Next is, kailangan na po natin declare yung ginamit natin na servo sa mismong program natin. So, ay, yung mismong potentiometer na ginamit natin. So, maglalagay ako ngayon dito ng another variable. Okay? So, ang gagamitin kong variable name is pot value. Okay? Then, another variable name is int degree. Okay? Now, ano naman tong dalawang um, variable na dinikir natin? Itong unang variable natin na to, pag sinabi natin muna, no? pag sinabi natin int, ang ibig sabihin po ng int is an integer. Which means to say, ito ay decimal value or decimal number. It doesn't mean to say na kapag decimal merong point or yung decimal places, no. Decimal value since it is a positive negative whole number. That's why it's an int or integer. So gagamitin natin ang pot value para sa ganun makuha natin the value of our potentiometer. Kung ano man po, yung laman ng potentiometer habang iniikot natin yung potentiometer natin, nilalagay natin yung value na yun papunta sa ating variable pot value. Now, kung medyo nakakakarfuse kayo sa pot value, you can just use x. Okay? Pwede yung gamitin si, si x. Kung gusto yung gamitin si x, pero ako ayoko nang gamitin si x, gamitin ko na lang pot value. Proper naming convention. Kung para saan nga ba yung proper naming convention. Para sa ganun, kung marami tayong um, components and variables, hindi tayo malilito kasi alam natin kaagad kung ano yung gamit ng variable na yun. Since it's pot value, then potentiometer value kaagad yun. Index, itong degree naman, ito yung mismong degree ng ating, mo, uh, ng ating servo motor. Kapag inikot ko si potentiometer, ibabato natin yung value ng potentiometer patpunta kay pot value. Ngayon, si pot value naman, ibabato natin yung pot value papunta kay degree. Si degree ngayon, i-convert natin siya. No? Yung pot value, i-convert natin into degrees. Okay? So medyo nakakalito, pero kapag nagita nyo na yung program, masusundan nyo naman po siya. Okay? Of course, under void loop, okay, under void loop po natin, kailangan lang natin i-type ang pot value followed by equal sign, map. And then, ano bang ibig sabihin ng map? Okay, no, not map pala. Pot value, itong pot value na ito, itong variable, okay? Pot value, and then analog, analog read, and then ano ba yung analog assignment na ginamit natin para sa ating potentiometer? Yung analog na ginamit natin, remember, it's the, going back here, it's the analog zero. So dapat ang nandito sa loob is analog zero, A, zero. Hindi po siya AO, but it's analog zero. Ayan po siya. So type natin ng analog zero. Okay? Now, gamitin muna natin tong serial.println para i-display yung value ng ating potentiometer. Lagay natin dito ang pot value. Para lang sa ganun, uh, guys, nakikita nyo yung output talaga. And then, maglalagay ako ng delay. One, uh, no, not delay 1,000. Maybe delay 100. And here, huwag natin kalimutang declare ang serial dot begin 9,600. Again, ito ay, you don't need to do this. Ipapakita ko lang yung mismong value ng potentiometer natin. Okay? For the meantime. And then, start simulation natin to. Okay? And then, click natin yung, ito. Kita nyo po, no? Yung pot value natin, zero. Ito po siya. Okay? Ito mismo. Okay? 
Pero, kapag ginalaw ko na yung potentiometer, as you can see in my screen po, no? Ito na siya, 164. Habang iniikot ko po siya, nagbabago din yung pot value. That means to say, binabato ng potentiometer yung value niya papunta sa ating variable na pot value. Again, yung pot value is just a variable. You can just change that. Okay? Ayan, so iniikot natin to. Nagbabago din yung potentiometer dito. Ngayon, ang gusto natin gawin, kapag inikot natin yung potentiometer, ganun din yung ikot ng ating servo. But remember, ang ating servo po ay hindi aabot ng 511. As you can see in my screen. Kasi 90, uh, 90 degrees lang po siya. Or simply, ito yung servo na SG90 ang tawag po doon. So pwede siyang umabot ng 90 or 180. Okay? SG90, pero hindi siya 90 degrees lang. Pwede mag-180. But not 360. Okay? That means to say po, no? na kailangan nating palitan yung ating mismong pot value or potentiometer frequency ito or resistance ito. Select natin yung resistance or yung mismong potentiometer natin. Again, naklik ko po siya. And then dito sa resistance, gawin po natin siyang, let's say, 90 for the meantime. Para sure lang tayo, no? Kinay po natin 90. Which means to say, yun, yan yung maximum value. Okay? So, tinipin natin 90. Okay? Going back here, select, and then type 90 here. Then, balik po tayo sa code. Okay? Code. Now, start simulation natin. Clear lang natin to. Okay? Yan. So, 90 na. Dapat, na, dapat mamaya, ang maximum na lang neto ay 90. Kapag pinindot na natin siya. Okay? Dapat, yun na lang yung lalabas. Okay, mamaya. Okay? So, start simulation lang ninyo later on. Okay? Stop simulation natin. And then, clear natin to. Remove natin to. Okay? Now, ang gagawin na natin is to connect or to control our servo using this potentiometer. Okay? Sa ngayon, kailangan nating um, i-remove muna itong serial.printl and saka delay. And next code natin is to convert <coughs> our pot value or the value of potentiometer, convert na natin siya into actual degree. Okay? Actual degrees. To do that, we simply type sa program natin ang tinatawag natin na degree. Ano ba tong degree na to? Ito yung variable na nandito. So degree is equal to map. Ito yung code para i-convert yung pot value, row value, into a degree angle. So map followed by, <coughs> sorry, pot value. Ayan. Again, yung pot value natin, guys, yan po yung galing sa potentiometer. Okay? Pot value, comma, zero, comma. Okay? Lagay natin ng space para sa ganun, hindi tayo malito later on. Space. Ano ba yung frequency na gusto natin? Or ano yung resistance na gusto natin? 90. 90 lang yung resistance na gusto natin. Okay? Okay? And then, zero, comma, space, and then, let's say 120 dito. Yung ikot niya. Okay? So, pwedeng, ang resistance natin mas higher, ah. Pwedeng, let's say, 1023. Or, let's say, 1000. It's up to you. Pwede nyo, nang, pwede nyo lang palit-palitan to later on. Okay? But nakaka-apekto ang mismong resistance or mismong ikot ng ating degree. Ito yun. Ito yung nakaka-apekto. Okay? Kailangan, ang max lang nito is 180. Pwede po natin gawing 90 to. Okay? And then, semicolon here. So, ibalik po natin ito sa dati. Pwede natin gawing 90 again or 1023 kung ano po yung resistance na nilagay natin kanina. Okay? Since ang nilagay natin dito kanina, kung natatandaan po ninyo, ay 90. Okay, ito 90 po. 1023 natin or 250 natin. It's up to you. Basta ang importante po, yung nandito is less than the the degree angle na kayang gawin ng ating pot value. Which means to say, dapat naka-match lang siya sa kung gaano siya, gaano ikot yung ating servo. So, since 120 lang to, okay na po yan. Kasi sabi ko kanina, 180, pwedeng pwede. And then next is, maglalagay na tayo ng my servo. That right. Followed by degree. Again, etong sorry, wala sana ako nagtatype. Um, my servo, that right. And then, yung mismong degree na na-convert natin, 
And then, of course, yung delay natin. Maglagay lang lang tayo ng short delay. Let's say 50. And so now, ang mangyayari po, pag inikot natin yung ating, I think natanggal ko yung aking potentiometer, no? Sorry, ibalik ko lang. Mm -hmm. And so, ang mangyayari po, sa code natin, um, zoom ko lang po. Ang mangyayari dito, first part, kukunin natin yung value ng potentiometer, ilalagay sa variable na pot value. Second part, i-convert natin yung pot value papunta sa degree. So, para ma-convert, kailangan natin itong map na, na function. And then, of course, yung resistance natin, followed by the starting degree angle and then ending degree angle natin. Hindi pwedeng sumobra sa 180. Okay? Followed by my servo that right degree. Atong my servo, ginamit po natin to kanina para mag-move na mismo yung ating servo. Delay is kung gaano kabilis or kabagal mag-respond yung ating servo depending sa pag-iikot ng ating potentiometer. Okay? Now, I think we are ready to run the program. Press natin yung code. Zoom lang natin po ito. Okay. And para makita po ninyo mabuti. And start simulation na po natin. Sana mag-work kung may nakalimutan man tayo o wala. Now, try natin i-move itong servo natin. Ayan. Napapansin nyo po, no? Ayan, minumove ko siya. Itong, itong part na to, kahit isagad natin, ibig sabihin po niyan, 120 pa rin yan. Remember yung program natin? Yung sa dulo, 120. So, ang start ay 0 up to 120. Ibig sabihin yung resistance ng ating servo from 0 to, 1, to 1023 or 0 to 1023, ginawa natin, kinonvert natin siya at minimin, binawasan ng starting 0 to 120. Kaya kapag iniikot ko to hindi aabot ng 1,023. Kasi, kinonvert na natin. Ayan po siya. So, umiikot, sumusunod din po ang ating servo. Okay, ayan po siya. Ayan. So, I hope nakakasunod yung iba, no? Balik lang natin sa code para sa ganun makita. Copy ko lang po to Lagay ko lang dito sa mismong Notepad++ plus plus natin. Okay. Um, sige. Ma'am Jen, meron po ba tayong mga <clears throat> katanungan from viewers natin na kailangan i-clarify? Ayan, no? Actually, I asked them already in the virtual classroom. Uh, I think they're still typing. Uh, yeah, we, we can uh, have the, the code slash bigger, I guess. Okay na Move. po kaya ito sa notepad plus plus natin? Uh, wait lang. Yeah, I think. So, can you... Uh, ayan. Hihilo na daw. Medyo mga teachers natin are so tired. No? It's already a Saturday. So, dami <laughs> daw nilang... And dami daw nilang work because they're doing the lesson exemplars but they are uh, continuing. Sir Wax said, I feel good. <laughs> Still working, Ma'am Gemma. Congratulations. The struggle is real. Okay, so, so far, uh, they are working. Uh, just to clarify, Sir Dom, no? so degree equals map. So the mapping, no? there are... Okay. Can we name the five parts of that? So the pot, pot value is the variable name. Can we have it uh, for those who are new? Kasi para sure. So the first value is the... Ito pong pot value, ma'am. Mm -mm. This pot value here is actually the variable name na kung saan kinukuha natin yung mismong value ng ating potentiometer. Here, you can see mm -hmm. here we have the int pot value. This is just a variable. Pwede yung ABC to. Yes, so, itong correct. pot value, kapag nakikita nyo po, naka-highlight din yung pot value na to. So, it's connected. Okay? So, itong pot value na to, yan yung value ng analog A0. Okay? Yung analog A0 natin, you can see here na my screen, ito po siya. Galing po yan sa ating potentiometer. Yan yung signal. Analog signal na nanggaling sa potentiometer, mm -hmm. nanilipat natin yung value niya papunta sa isang container na pot value Correct. ang pangalan. Ngayon, dito sa degree, <coughs> sorry, yung degree naman to, another variable, wherein, mm -hmm. 
ito po yung mismong variable na kung saan i-convert na natin yung row value from our potentiometer. Okay? Correct. So yung row value na yon, i-convert natin into a degree angle. Ngayon, itong degree angle na to, since ang ating potentiometer ay sobrang laki ng value, so itong map na to is a command na nagsasabi na ang pot value natin, ang pot value, remember, the pot value is just a row value na hanggang 0 to 10, uh, 1,023, instead na hanggang 1,023, i-convert natin yung 1,023 na yan papunta into a lesser value which is 120. Which means to say kahit nakamax na yung potentiometer na maging 1,023 na yung ma-reach niya, still, magiging 120 lang yun. Alright. Kasi nakadeclare dito 120. Pansin nyo ito, itong unang zero na to, ito yun. Itong 1023 na to, ito yun. Kinoconvert natin itong 1023 to 120. Pwede pong 90 to. Okay? Yes. Kung minun natin ng max yung ating potentiometer, 90 degrees lang nung katumbas nun. Okay? Okay, correct. Yan, that is very, health, very helpful. Remember that your servos come in different angle maximum turns. Kaya baka ang nabili nyo, 180 lang, pinaikot mo ng 360. So, magka-crack, crack, crack. <laughs> hindi, na, hindi na siya aabot. To. So, you're expecting a 360, tapos ang, you you connected uh, a 120, 180 na servo. So, uh, it's also uh, paying attention to details for students, uh, knowing the specific parts that they're placing and uh, getting specific yields on their codes. Okay, so Ma'am Gemma says, may error po ang akin ko. Ayan nga. The problem with teachers, we're, we're looking at the screen almost 24-7 na. That's why we are getting uh, typos na. Okay, so far they're good, sir. But we can go to the next, I believe. Okay, I think uh, last part na tayo, Ma'am Jen. Yung mismong distance sensor natin. Okay po. Okay. No? So magdi-distance sensor na tayo, which is kailangan na natin ng conditional statement po doon. Okay? So, I hope uh, nakuha niyo po ito. Pwede kayong gumawa ng panibago na <coughs> na file or pwede ito naman yung gamitin niyo. But for me, I think gagawa na lang ako ng panibago. So, click ulit yung mismong logo ng Tinkercad. And, of course, kailangan kong gumawa ng panibagong circuit. Create new circuit po tayo dito. Eh, press lang po natin yung create new circuit here. Ayan. So, panibagong um, uh, file na naman tayo. No? Pwede yung palitan to. Gawin natin na felt. Ah? Dust. Distance sensor. Okay. Ayan. Then, of course, the same um, <coughs> procedure. Add tayo ng Arduino Uno. Add tayo ng breadboard. And now, mag-add tayo ng Hanapin natin yung distance sensor. Ito yung tinatawag na ultrasonic distance sensor. So you can see here. Ilalagay ko ngayon siya dito sa ating breadboard. Dito na lang po. Ayan. You can see. Yung ating distance sensor po ay meron siyang different parts. Okay. We have here yung ating GND, the 5 volts and the signal. Okay. Tatlo lang po. Ito ay a parallax ultrasonic distance sensor. So again, Yung ating GND should be connected to negative. Connect na natin sa negative to. <clears throat> Block. And then, this is red. And then, this signal here, kailangan dalhin po natin to sa ating digital pin. Okay? Yung digital pin natin, pwede tayong gumamit ng digital pin. Mm, nine, maybe? Yan. So, pwede naman kahit anong digital pin po. But, uh, I choose nine. Ano bang meron sa nine? Wala naman po. Sige. Now, um, mahaba po yung program nito, Okay? Totally mahaba. Para, sa, para mabilis natin maintindihan yung conditional statement, ang gagawin po natin, ituturo ko sa inyo kung paano kumuha ng codes from Arduino CC. Itatype lang po natin sa ating server or sa ating browser ang arduino.cc. Okay? Arduino.cc. Heto po siya. Okay? Ngayon, dito sa Arduino.cc, marami kayong makukuha ang mga tutorials and materials also. And, of course, search po natin yung mismong, um, tawag doon, 
has distance sensor. Type po natin ang distance sensor. Ayan, yung ping. Ayan. So, pag type nyo ng distance sensor, makikita nyo <coughs> ang mga iba't ibang projects gamit ang distance sensor. Ayan. Para sa ganun, mas maintindihan nyo po yung mga ano bang gamit ng distance sensor. Okay? Ayan. Ito po siya. Sobrang dami po. Ayan. Ngayon, gaya ng sabi ko, since sobrang haba ng code ng distance sensor, ang gagawin po, ang gagawin ko ngayon po ay I will show you how to simplify yung code. So, punta tayo sa google.com. Hanapin po natin ang distance sensor. Type natin distance sensor ping. Ayan. Arduino distance sensor ping. Pwede po natin i-type yan. And then lalabas po ulit yung distance sensor natin dito. Click lang po natin yung ping. Ayan, eto na po siya. So, eto, makita yung explanation ng gamit ng distance sensor. Paano i-calibrate or paano paganahin yung mismong distance sensor. Okay? Yung circuit, nandito rin po yung explanation niya. So, you can see here, na ang ginamit na, na assignment, I7 here. And ang ginamit ko naman ay 9 Walang problema doon. Okay? And of course, um, going back here, yung semantic diagram. Okay? And yung code, nandito rin po yung code niya mismo. So, ang gagawin po natin, we will simply copy the code. Kasi, gaya na sabi ko, sobrang haba po ng code. Okay? Para sa ganun, ma-explain ko lang sa inyo yung parts ng code. Hindi na natin itatype. Okay? So, this is free. Wala naman pong copyright to. So, we simply copy. Okay? So, copy natin tong um, buong code na to. Okay? So, select everything and then copy. Okay? And then going back to Tinkercad, press code, text, continue. Ayan. Then, tanggalin na po natin lahat to. Select everything and then paste. Nawala ka dyan mo, Sir Dom. Okay. I think meron pong inquiry. Yan, nilanamog ko lang po lahat ng comments. But I will explain these um, codes here. Okay? Ayan, so sobrang haba po ng, ng code nito. Okay? Now, okay, before we proceed with the program, do not forget, again, yung power ng ating Arduino. Papunta sa breadboard natin. So, negative. Again, kuha tayo ng negative value here. Yung positive, connect din natin yung positive. Change natin yung color. Also, this one, gawin natin black. Ayan po. So, okay na to. So, ito na yung code natin. Okay? Ma'am Jen, nandyan po ba kayo? Uh, quick question lang po kung nasundan po nila yung circuit design natin para ma-explain ko na po yung code natin. Okay, so yung isa nating ground ay nasa ground. Ay, yung ating uh, positive ay nasa ground, Sir Dom. Palit. Uh, sa baba. Hmm. Ay, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, ba? <laughs> Bamos Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. okay lang, okay lang. Yeah. Deb, uh, may nag uh, sa nag-comments, kanina nag-send sa akin ng photo kasi hindi niya talaga makita. No, it's really hard to find the bugs sometimes. Nakakaduli. Okay, so sometimes you're missing uh, closing par closing bracket or like parenthesis. Sometimes you type in double. So, yung parent close parenthesis ay na doble, ma'am Jen. Yan, so mga Jen yan. Okay, nice. so far, let me see if they have questions. Ayan. Ah, pwede daw bang makopya ang code? <laughs> Ipopost. Um, paano natin ibibigay, ma'am? Ma'am Jen, i-copy-paste ko, then send ko sa'yo? Ah, uh, pwede, 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 pwede. Okay, sa so StreamYard po, no? Here in chat, our chat. Sa chat po. Opo. And then you can also Ah, uh, doon sa Arduino, yung Arduino link para hindi na sila maloka. Yes, tama po. Ito po, mismo. Punta lang po kayo sa, again, ang tinay po natin kanina sa ating Google ay yung distance ping Arduino. Ping Ito Arduino. lang po. Oh. And then yung pinakaunang Arduino. link, arduino.cc, click nyo lang po yan. And then copy nyo po yung code. Correct. Ayan. 
Copy lang po natin yan. Yeah, this is the good thing about the Arduino learning, no? There's a lot of community resources. Uh, they are very friendly. So, sobrang friendly. They give you more than what you asked for. So, you just have to uh, pick and choose which one works. And sometimes, um, especially if you are using uh, white labeled boards, because not everyone can avail the original boards, no? There are some uh applications your codes are correct but the device won't take it because you need to uh, uh, install the driver so uh sometimes the people and teachers even get frustrated even my college students get frustrated because they work hard on assembly and they worked hard on the code there's no error on the code but the board is uh not accepting it no so it's really 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 crucial that yes. you uh Take care of little details. So don't okay. worry. There's a lot of community help. And you can ask our Dom as the expert. Hello, okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I, I can support you emotionally. <laughs> yes, that's Okay. Correct. So, so far, so where, where can they actually use it? And their, um, the smart city. San, san ginagamit itong mga distance sensor, mga... Uh, potential it. Okay. Um, just to give you an idea. Well, actually, matagal nang ginagamit ang distance sensor. Sa mga Correct. sasakyan, when, uh, when you park your mm -hmm. car, merong distance, mm -hmm. merong siyang parking system na tinatawag that is actually using distance sensor. Pero hindi kagaya mm -hmm. ng sensor na ginagamit natin. It's a different version. The same with sa mismong mga MOLTS parking system. Di ba? Meron parang light yeah. sa taas. Mm -hmm. diba, pag, pag green, ibig sabihin that is vacant. Kapag red, it's uh -huh. occupied. Kapag papasok ka sa mga high-tech na malls or high-tech na mm. establishments, kung saan magbubukas mm. yung door, sliding door, it's because there's a sensor, distance mm. sensor, na nakapag-detect siya ng tao, then automatic na magbubukas. Or yeah. tinatawag so PIR sensor. It's possible na Correct. PIR, thermal naman yung kinukuha niya. Ayan. Oh. Ayan. Pwede emerge, no? So the distance sensor, you can merge with the servo motor. So just like sa... Uh, if it's if it's a door, a sliding door, or uh, meron yung mga rolling doors yung may sa mga gates yon, you know? So when the sa mga gate ng bahay, when you are trying to get in, there is a sensor that actually detects if the car is ano coming in. And there are more specialized. If that car is yours, then it will open. If that if the car is not yours, then it won't. So there are cameras where you can code. That's a higher level and. And there are a lot of devices to use for it. It's not just the Arduino. We, we can use the Pi and we can use um, other microcontrollers. So it's always a good start to, to familiarize with Arduino first. It's the most user-friendly so far for beginning. Yes. Of course, they okay. can buy Arduino in Falta. I think there is Falta, ma'am. Jen, tama ba? Yeah. Yeah, okay. they have the, the guest that we have uh miss mai let's call in miss mai <laughs> miss mai are you there ay wako sa nang uh madam ay wako pa kaso yeah you're asking uh oh yes uh -oh. the um gearbox labs is the uh, authors of the uh, arduino classroom so that's the curriculum and then it and then they also have mini sets, uh, mini kits, which means if you only want to use, for example, the sound sensor, you can just get that. Or if you want a training, a training um, kit, which is including all the all the other sensors, so we can also arrange for that. So we have we have we have training kits, we have competition kits as well. So all of that is available in Felta. So you just uh, go to uh, you can in, you can send us an email at felta multimedia inc incorporated at uh, gmail.com. Sir Wax can flash it. So the kids, uh, Miss Jen, I just want to of course uh, inform the the public that there are certain sensors that are available only at the Gearbox Lab kits. Because um, as uh, Peter Haydock has mentioned in, in our conversations, that 
uh, there are common parts, of course, because Arduino is commonly it's um, found in oh, yeah. many, widely many used. electronic mm -hmm. stores, or uh, especially here in the Philippines. But there are certain sensors and certain uh, parts that are, I would say, proprietary to Gearbox Labs. So oh, those yeah. are uh, salient yeah. points. Uh -oh. Yeah, they developed it themselves, no? Because they are the yes. authors. They already yes. have a plan for it. So, yeah. We, we use it. Dapat pagpunta natin na Kelta, fully automated na si Mama Amy, you know? Uh Oo. -oh. No. <laughs> Hindi, okay. balik uh, even for the for the schools, because right, like mm -hmm. what uh, what Dom has been showing to us in the past, uh, what uh, hour and hour and a half, what you have been showing mm -hmm. us, these are now the I would say this is the future. So we really have to win the future. It started here with uh, these kinds of uh, calls, these webinars. It's, you know, it's a new norm. Uh, how we are going to uh, uh, share our knowledge is going through digital format. Now, if they have the skills in the smart cities, as we are showing them, they will also be able to uh, develop the future engineers that we need and roboticists. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah correct. And uh, the good thing about them joining webinars like these also is uh, you can buy a service yeah. provider service with the kit itself, but there's always that uh, room for customization because not everything that you can buy commercially is fit for your needs. You have to add on or reduce, no? So, yes. uh, kailangan talaga you learn and not just buy. Because what will happen is you buy the very expensive one and then something comes up and maliit na servo lang pala. You just have to replace the servo and you don't uh, know anything about it. You'll end up buying a whole set instead of replacing one part. So, yes. yun yung advantage dito. Na, it's always so, good thing board, to know. yung importante, you buy the quality. Kasi yung breadboard, yan yung laging, ano eh, <laughs> nag, uh, nasisira, di ba? And then you just, pipili yeah. kayo ng mura, and then you just keep buying and buying and changing and changing. Parang bumibili tayo ng sapatos. Kailangan medyo quality <laughs> naman. O, just palit tayo ng palit. Mm -hmm. Di ba? It's, it's the same oh, logic. Yeah. You buy yeah. quality. You buy for quality. Yeah. And then, Sir Dom will show us, I know, pala, your actual kit. Tama ba? Sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, but before <laughs> that, I think yung, um, just a quick um, overview dun sa Arduino kit ng Felt. I think meron atang book na kasama yun, ma'am, no? Para sa yes. ganun, may curriculum, sila. yes. Uh, there's mm. a curriculum which is, uh, it can compasses from beginner up to advanced. So, hanggang college level siya. Meron. Saka bihira yung may nagsusulat ng ano ah, curriculum ng Arduino. Actually, so I think it's a uh, gearbox labs lang ang alam ko, di ba? Dom, Sir Dom, ang Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Parang nagsulat pa so far for oh. for for yeah, Arduino. Ang ganda, yeah. sobrang ang ganda. Maganda yung book. Yung kasama niya na curriculum. Sobrang ganda Very bibigyan mo daw kami ni Dom. <laughs> <laughs> Very informative. Hey, mm -hmm. oh. all right. Okay, let's look at what you proceed. Thank you, So, what I did so far, I changed the ping assignment, the value here. Kanina, this is 7. We just copy-paste yung code galing sa Arduino. That's CC. So, this is actually 7 kanina. So, I changed it to 9. Kasi ang ginamit ko pong digital pin is 9. So, all you need to change is the pin assignment. No need to change the rest. Okay? So, hindi na natin papahabain yung kwento. Alright? Now, explain ko lang, quick explanation lang kung ano nga bang nangyari dito. Under void, uh, this first line here is actually the declaration of variable. Which means to say that the the digital uh, assignment, pin assignment is 9. Kailangan natin declare. So, const means it's a constant integer. Constant variable. That is an integer. Ping pin is just a variable. Now we use ping pin because it's the name of this is a distance sensor and parang ping. Nagpi ping tayo, nag ask tayo ng, ng value. That's why it's ping pin is just a term now which is pin, the pin. Okay, then the nine, which is the assignment, the digital assignment, followed by the serial that begin 9600. That means to say that this is the connection between our Arduino and our, our computer. 
Long duration inches centimeter. Long is another a type of data type. This is a data type which is long. It's it's like an integer. It's like a float, a string, or a character. But then it's a long. Mas mahaba siya sa integer. Duration is just a variable. Inches is just a variable. Cm is just a variable. So we need these things here. It's because these are the variables that will what hold the value of our sensor. So ipapasa-pasa natin yung value ng sensor natin and we will convert the value of our sensor into different unit of measurements. You can see here, CM, inches, and the duration. At first, we can use in inches. We can also use centimeters. Okay? Para sa ganun, may option tayo kung gusto ba natin gamitin ng inches or centimeter. And if you want to use kilometers, well, it's up to you. You just simply do the, the mathematical expression or equation. Okay? Then pin mode is the pin assignment, ping pin output. Output because ang ginagawa natin is we simply send signal. Nagsasend tayo ng signal sa sensor natin. And then right after sending the signal, ino-off natin yung ating sensor. Which means to say, May specific time. May specific time interval na magsasend tayo ng signal. And at the same time, may specific time na i-on natin yung ating sensor. So, hindi tuloy-tuloy na naka-on at hindi tuloy-tuloy na naka-off. For us to be able to what? To extract the value. Parang ganito. There's a ball. Yung bola, ibabato ko. That's where you what? You turn on. Kumbaga. So, you send the, 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 the signal. Ngayon, ibabato ko sa wall yung bola. Okay, may action talaga. Ibabato ko yung ball sa wall. Ay, ibabato ko yung ball sa wall. Ngayon, the moment I throw the ball, yan yung sending the signal. Kaya naka-high. Ngayon, since pag tumama yung bola sa wall at babalik sa akin yung bola, that's the signal na nanggali sa mismong yung bounce, nag-bounce yung echo na tinatawag. So, nag-high na yung ating ping. Okay, nag-high na siya. So, ngayon, Yung duration na variable, that's the interval. Halimbawa, binato ko yung bola. Let's say, ang, ang, ang tagal bago na-reach ng wall ay, let's say, 5 seconds. Pag bumalik sa akin yung bola, another 5 seconds. Ngayon, yung duration na yun, 10 seconds in total. No? Yung 10 seconds na yun, i-convert natin siya into what? Into distance. That's why, itong papakitang sunod na, na code, ito po, duration is equal to pulse in, ping pin high. Ibig sabihin po ng line na yan, kinoconvert natin yung time interval. Okay? Kinoconvert na natin yan. Nag-i-star nag natin i-convert yung interval. Yung 10 segundo, yung papunta at pabalik sa akin, kinoconvert na natin siya into distance. Okay? So, in chest, ang unang ginamit natin dito na unit of measurement is in chest, microseconds to in chest. Take note of the term to in chest. Duration. This is simply a command or a function. Hindi na no need to, to do the mathematical equation, but simply using the reserve word or reserve function, microseconds to in chest, convert na natin yung time interval, yung traveled, into a unit of measurement, which is in chest. At the same time, we can convert it to centimeters by simply using the microseconds to centimeters. Kung ayon pong gamitin, then you convert the inches to centimeters divided by 2.54. So, ito lang yung, gento lang siya kasimple. In short, kinoconvert lang natin yung time into unit of measurement. Then, yung part na to, remember, yung serial that print natin is to simply display the value of our distance sensor. At yan lang po siya talaga. And eto na po, yung mga reserve natin kanina, it's because meron tayo yung mathematical expression dito na 74 divided by 2, 29 divided by 2. Guys, I don't need to explain this. As you can see, this is the command wherein we convert the, the time duration papunta sa unit of measurement. We don't need to change this kasi that's given already. Okay? Now, if I'm going to run this program, you can see here, nakapag-click ko po itong part na to. Okay? Litan ko lang po siya, no? Naka-start start simulation, i-click ko po to. You can see the distance here, 49. And kapag mag-press ako ito, this is the actual distance. Let's say itong bilog na to, ito yung mismong wall. Kapag nilalapit ko, you can see the distance become 
shorter. Ayan, habang lumalapit, of course, the distance nagiging short din siya. Ayan. So, minumove natin siya, lumalayo din yung distance. So, parang sa actual, no? Ganun din yung application niya. So, without using an actual Arduino kit, guys, we can use an ultrasonic distance sensor simply using Tinkercad. Again, it's free. But then, of course, if you want to to, you know, habis kayo or maker kayo, of course, kailangan niyo ng actual Arduino kit. The same program po ito. Ayan po siya. Okay, wala tayong binago. Ang binago lang natin sa code is just the pin assignment. So, I think it's working already. Then, we go back to Ma'am Jen, kung meron tayong mga katanungan. Then, after ng katanungan natin, you can see, Mama, i-demonstrate ko yung actual na board. I'm using Ar Arduino Mega and yung ating water sensor and, uh, Uh, soil moisture sensor here. Mama, if flash ni Sir Wax yung aking screen, no, yung ating camera dito. Para sa ganun, may pakita ko kung paano nag-work in actual Arduino kit. But kanina, in the first part, nakita nyo na dinemonstrate sa atin ng, um, ng Gearbox Labs yung mga different available sensors sa kanilang kit. Okay? So, Ma'am Jen, I think clear na po po tayo or may mga katanungan. Ayan. Ang tanong is, where do you connect the green circuit? line uh, sa pin 9. Yes. Pin 9. Correct. Pin 9 po. But then, in your code, sa program po natin na kinapi natin from Arduino.cc, ang constant ping pin is equal to 7. Then you need to change that and make it 9. Okay? okay. Since 9 ang ginamit natin, yun lang ang nag-iisang um, code na nilalit natin, pinalitan natin ng ng uh, assignment. So, wala na po tayong binaroon. Oh, yeah. Or kung ayaw mo magpalit ng code, magpalit ka ng pin. <laughs> Ilipat uh -oh. mo. Ilipat mo sa 7. Diba? Okay. So, I think ang sabi niya, thank you so much. Oh, happy customer. One happy customer <laughs> ulit. <laughs> okay. We have a live uh, pa rin yung ating virtual mat. If you have questions, ask us. Now na. Okay. So, Sir Dom, ano mo, may code kasi yan eh, no? So, yung actual kit, there are codes for, ano mo, ano mo hindi naman code eh, yung mismong type ng ultrasonic sensor because it comes in different ranges. Okay, so you pick the ultrasonic sensor based on how you are going to use it. For example, you are using it for a sumo bot, okay? Why would I buy a 12 feet range na na ultrasonic sensor to put in my sumo bot if the sumo <laughs> ring is only 4 feet wide ang diameter, di ba? So Correct. wala 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 po yun sa distance na capacity ng sensor, it's on your code. Okay? Correct. So be uh yung iba misconception is I I would buy the the higher cost because it, it's going to work better. Uh, that's Correct. another misconception, you know? You don't have yes. to... But, of course, the quality, as per Ms. Maynga, the quality of the legit parts are different. But in terms of range, you pick and choose which one suits your need. Kung kailangan mo mas malaking object, mas, malaki, mas malayo na object to detect, then you pick a longer range of ultrasonic sensor but if you are like what we said you're going to use it for your sumo bot there's a lot of coaches who are who may be watching um and some of the coaches naman are not really uh it practitioners no they are coaches uh na voluntold okay you were voluntold to coach and then you learn eventually <laughs> ako voluntold yes, correct. marami pong ganun mga gen mm -hmm. natuto lang po sila through experiences nila correct. Yeah. Sa mga pag-attend ng mga webinars ng tulad nito, ayan. Yeah. Yes. Correct. That's... So, yeah, Now, be, be wise. Yes, tama po 'yun. Now, Ma'am Jen, since I think wala na ata tayong katanungan, pwede na yep. kaya tayong mag-proceed sa actual? Yes, of course. Yes. You have Naghanda your Naghanda din ako ng um <laughs> tubig dito at saka yeah. <laughs> soil, no? Ide-demonstrate yeah. ko po yung yung Correct. dalawang sensors natin dito. Ayan. So, ito po yeah. yung proof na pinaghahandaan natin mm. mabuti yung ganitong klaseng webinar from Felta. So, we mm. want an informative webinar like this. Okay? okay. So, Ma'am uh, Jen, kung Sorry. wala na tayong katanungan, I yeah. think we can put the actual demonstration. 
Okay. Um, may I ask si Sir? Ayan. I think nakikita ko na yung aking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will yeah. hide also. Yes, ma'am. So ngayon, ipapakita ko yung aking screen habang naka-flash po. Okay. Open ko po yung Arduino app ko. And... Ayan. So you can see here, narinig pa rin ako, no? You can see here po sa ating screen ang... Um, um, Sir Max, pwede mo bang i-focus yung mismong... Ayan, ito. Ating uh, Ayan. actual Arduino to. Okay, kung wala Ayan, po kayo Arduino, konti. it's okay. Ayan. Lapit, so, lapit konti yung cam, Sir Dom. Medyo malayo. Uh, medyo zoom ba? in sa... sa ano? Nabababa mo pa ba yung... Ano mo, um, I'm not sure po, but I'm using my phone. Oh, right yeah. now. Maybe we can put it uh, closer kasi medyo malaya. Sige po mag- Check yeah. natin. Ayan. Um, minumove ko na siya. I'm not sure kung nakukuha po siya or yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have my third camera here. So ito yung phone ko gamit ko ngayon just to show you the actual Arduino. I'm using the Arduino Mega right now. And I have here the you can see here in the camera we have here the uh, soil moisture sensor, and also we have here the actual um, water sensor. Uh, these two guys here are actually available also in the Arduino kit from Felta. So pwede yung kunin. And also here we have the breadboard, the LED, the resistor, and also the Arduino Mega, which is actually connected to my computer already, okay? The Arduino software is free. You can just download it. Pwede nyo search sa Google. So, type nyo lang Arduino and lalabas na po yun. Now, um, first thing to do is to demonstrate how this thing, how this sensor, this water sensor here, kung paano nga ba siya gumagana. Okay? So, you can see here na meron siyang tatlong um, uh, wires, no? connections. Kailangan natin i-connect. So, we have the S. We have the positive here. And we have the negative, okay? I think I can show my screen right now. Just go to circuitto.io. Okay. Uh, Sir Wax, can you show my screen, my computer? Habang nakashow din po yung ating um, tawag doon. Ayan. Para lang sa ganun, makita nyo po yung actual na um, itsura ng ating water sensor. Ayan. Ayan. So, thank you, Sir Wax. Ito, guys. Ito yung mismong um, design natin. No? You can see naman. Ayan. Ito yung distance, uh, distance sensor. Sorry. Ito yung ating water sensor. It has three uh, wires connected to our Arduino. It's the same. Ha? I'm just using Arduino Mega. But then, it's the same... Um, the same code, the same semantic diagram, okay? So I'm using circuit.io, circuito.io. It's Again, it's free. No need to purchase it. You, you don't need to sign up. Libre po ito, no? Now you can see here the water sensor na nakakonect na sa ating Arduino Uno. We have the 5 volts connected to the positive. We have the GND, which is connected to our negative. And we also have the S, which is the signal connected to our A3 or analog 3, okay? So... Gayahin nyo lang po itong design na to, itong cinematic diagram. Since you don't have this uh, Arduino thing in your uh, right now, then uh, siguro screenshot nyo lang to later on para ganun. Kapag meron na kayo, sundan nyo na lang po. Nyo. Okay? So, ang code po is this. Okay? Gagawa lang po ako ng panibagong code here. Create nyo lang po ako. Okay? Of course, we need the void set up here. Okay? And opening curly bracket, we also need the void loop. Sorry. And then opening and closing curly bracket here. Under void setup, I need to type serial.begin. Ang gusto kong mangyari is to display the value of this sensor. Kapag nilagay ko siya, of course, kompleto tayo, may tubig tayo dito. Um, kapag nilagay natin yung ating sensor sa tubig, magbabago yung value. So that's why kailangan ko yung 9,600 dito, which is the baud rate. Under void loop, kailangan kong i-declare ang um, serial dot 
print ln and then followed by analog read a kung saan natin ilalagay mamaya yung ating mismong um, sensor yung signal natin so a sabi natin a0 okay and then of course we need the delay delay 1000 natin or around 500 milliseconds para medyo mabilis po yung response rate Okay? Ayan. So, mas maganda nakikita yung aking screen. And at the same time, nakikita nyo po yung mismong actual na demonstration natin. Mas importante yung code, actually. Yeah. So, ngayon, since meron na tayong code, ililipat ko na lang ito mamaya sa mismong Arduino app. But I'll show you how to wire our, this one, water sensor. So, I need three wires. We have here the male to female wires. Okay? So, tatlong kailangan natin. Remember our circuit, somatic diagram. Connect po natin to. Okay. Again, the negative wire, ito po, the negative wire should be connected to our negative breadboard. So, a negative, sorry, not breadboard, um, um, pin in our Arduino Mega. So, hanapin po natin yung negative. And let's connect this thing here sa ating GND. And, of course, we have also the positive, which, which should be connected to the positive also, 5 volts. Lagay natin siya sa 5V. Making sure it's correct. Ayan, it's plug properly. Don't worry, hindi naman to nakaka, uh, hindi naman kayo ma-electrocute. And also the last one, we have also here the S or the signal, which is, which is, should be connected to A0 because you can see in our code, we use A0 or analog 0. Ayan. So complete na yung ating, uh, Connections, all we need to do is to make sure to plug this thing to our um, USB port, no? Lagay na natin po siya. Yan. And of course, naglight yung ating sensor. That means it's working. Okay? It's working. All right. Now, going back to our uh, code, no? Since okay na yung ating design, yung ating circuit, Copy na natin yung ating code. Ilipat na natin sa ating Arduino. Ito na po siya. Ayan po. Let me just show you my screen again. Lakihan lang po natin para kitang-kita ng marami. Ayan. Sir, Rox, can you show my um my screen? Check lang po natin dito. If nakikita ko yung screen ko. Just to make sure. Okay, ito na yun. Ayan. So guys, ito yung Arduino, actual Arduino setup natin. No? We have the serial that begin 1,600, serial that print L and analog read A0. We forgot something here, the crossing um, uh, parentheses and delay 500. Now, since our Arduino is connected to our computer already, then we change the tools natin. Kailangan natin i-make sure na ang board natin is an Arduino Mega. You can see, sobrang dami ng board. So do not forget to change, ah. So, Arduino Mega, since Mega ang gamit natin, kanina ang ginagamit natin is Uno, then should be Uno also. So, since Mega, select Mega. Going back to tools. And then the port number should be COM5, Arduino Mega or Mega2560 since this is the name of our port. Okay? So, select lang po niyan. Okay? Then, of course, we need to upload the program. How to do that? How to upload? You simply press this upload icon here. On the upper left corner of my screen, you can see upload, yung icon na arrow facing your right. Upload, click natin yan. And then, it's up to you if you want to save. Uh, but for me, I want to save and name it as a water sensor. Dash code. And then, since na-save na po siya, then automatically, ma-upload din yung ating program. Kung walang error ang ating program, Makikita niyo po sa inyong screen, it should be done uploading. And you can see here, the message sketch uses 2,184 bytes, blah, 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 here, okay? And then should be, there's a prompt, it should be, uh, the message should be done uploading, which means we have successfully uploaded our program. Now, the moment of truth, we need to open our serial monitor. We are talking about the actual demonstration. So, ito yung serial monitor natin. It's on my upper right corner of my screen. You can see here, yung parang search bar natin dito. I think sa screen ko, natatakpan siya ng Felta PAOER na, na logo. 
So, nandito lang po siya sa upper right. Ayun, thank you sir. Thank you for that very um, quick resp- uh, response sa ating ano. Ayan. So, serial monitor. Click lang po ninyo yan. May lalabas na prompt. You can see, ano bang output? It's zero. Nag one. Nag three. Ayan, ito po siya. Ayan. Guys, you can see now. Ayan. <laughs> Nasaan po ba ang ating water sensor? Nasa tubig. That's why you can see yung value po, nag increase po siya. Now, kapag tatanggalin po natin yung water sensor sa mismong tubig, you can see that the value will decrease also. Ayan po. That means sa iba sa or dry or wet lang po siya. So, pwede nyo gamitin to. Paano ina-apply to sa, sa mismong um, smart cities? No? Sa smart city. Kapag tag-ulan, na detect siya na umu... Ano ba, nasa loob ka ng bahay mo, may sampay ka, no? May sampay ka. Ngayon, pwede mong gamitan ng um, water sensor ng servo yung sampayan mo. Yung wire ng sampayan mo, pwedeng, pwedeng uh, gumamit ng continuous servo, okay? Continuous servo. Para sa ganyong continuous servo mo, nakakonect yung yung mismong string, tama ba? Ma'am, dyan na dyan ka pa ba? Oo, oh, nandito ako. Oh, <laughs> guess, oh, I hope oh. nag-guess mo yung idea ko. Oh, no? guess Sampayan guess siya. Actually. Tapos yung string niya, nakakonect sa mismong servo motor na 360 oh, or continuous servo. Ngayon, kapag tama. umulan, matedetect ng water sensor natin yung ulan, kapag umulan, magiging matas yung value ng ating water sensor. Ngayon, pagaganahin uh, natin yung servo, paikutin natin yung servo, para sa ganun, hihilain niya ngayon yung sampay natin. Natago na sa loob ng bahay. Sir Dom, ingatan mo, pag may sipit, di ka kaya talaga lalabay kay di ba? Pag, pag may sipit, sipit, hindi siya ay, papasok kayo line. Ayun, kapag may sipit po, uh, ganito lang po yung idea niya. Kapag may sipit naman, kailangan merong allowance yung yung Correct. ating kapit yung wire, oh, di ba? Oo, tama. So, Dapat may dadaan. May, may engineering talaga yung, oh, yung laba. Hindi lang ano ay remind na maglalaba ako bukas, pero... <laughs> okay. So, yeah. There, it's pwede very ka ng, ano Pwede kang mag-mall. What, without... Without... Uh, <laughs> hindi ka na... na without compromising your uh, no, laundry. Mm-hmm. Automated na. Autonomous okay. na lahat. <laughs> okay. Hindi so, nila masyadong kita yung ano, i- i-twist mo sir, yung um yung para makita nila yung dip sa water. No, there are if you pull out the water level sensor, meron yang mga ano, ang tawag doon, uh, lines nandoon sa ano niya. Kita mo sir. Hunot. Ayun, so hindi mo na kailangan mag-worry. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-worry kung ay, may sampay ako, kailangan ko na umuwi. <laughs> so, automatic <laughs> na yun, no? Gumagana yung yes. servo mo. <laughs> Di ba? Actually, so, pwede yung gumawa ng simple uh, practice. Mm-hmm. Mura lang yan. Mas yeah, mura yeah, pa actually. kaysa compromise ang damit mo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kung wala kang tire, di ba? Oh. Correct. Okay. Uh, so, yan. Yeah. Kusang lumililim yung mga sampay mo. <laughs> Ayan po. So, so simple yung ano, idea lang. Okay. Ano pa yung may dalawa ka pang sensor doon nakikita ko. Ayan. Well, actually, this is isang The sensor. Soil moisture. Mm-hmm. Ito ay soil moisture sensor. Ito kung gusto mong diligan ng halaman mo, ano, ng automatic na pagdilig sa halaman. So, tanggalin ko na po itong tubig, baka matapon. Ayan. So, guys, mm-hmm. huwag niyo pong gagayahin to sa computer kayo gumagawa. Baka matapon yung tubig. Okay? Uh-uh, Ayan. So, tanggalin ko na po ito. And then, iwawire ko na ngayon itong ating Uh, soil motion sensor. So, Sir Wax, pwede mo po bang um, i-display oh, ang aking please. screen? Ang aking screen po. Para may pakita ko po dito. Ayan. So, circuit to that I.O. Remove lang natin to. And gagamit naman po ako ng mismong um, soil moisture sensor. Available din ang soil moisture sensor sa circuit to. Type lang po natin dito soil moisture. Para lang makita niyo yung itsura. And then add. Mm-hmm. And then automatic naman yung wiring po. Ito po siya, spark fan. Yan. Mm-hmm. Nga lang, syempre, uh, knowing the name, spark fan, mahal po yan. <laughs> Kung ako mm-hmm. sa inyo mag-local, uh, ano na lang kayo. Mm-hmm. Or, of course, meron tayong uh, cost-effective na sensor from Felta. Well, you can buy it, you can buy it also. Okay? So, ayan. So, same lang po sila nang nandito sa aking actual kit. But then, this one is mm-hmm. quite expensive. Okay? I'm using the not-so-branded 
cheap lang po siya. It's China made. Okay? So, yan. So, yan po yung gagamitin din natin. Same lang po siya. Now, going back to our code. Okay? Ito rin yung gagamitin natin para hindi na tayo matagalan. No? Correct. Diba? Ang galing ng Arduino. Same oh, code, but different sensor. <laughs> ba? Uh, why are they, thing? ano pala, Sir Dom, uh, we did not use uh, Tinkercad here because the sensor is not available in Tinkercad. Exactly yung po. Ating, ano, meron kayong masasearch, pero Paizo ang lumalabas. Yeah, <laughs> Hindi yeah, po yun yung actual. So, yeah. yeah, you have to be Yun yung disadvantage naman if you're using online resource. Yan po. Yan. I think, ma'am, Jen, we can proceed with the ultrasonic sensor na. Yep. Yep. Now, so the same code, going back, the same code siya. Why the same code but different sensor? Ito po yung kagandahan ng Arduino. Ang Arduino, compatible yung code in different, uh, in different components. Isa pa pong, ano, kapag meron kayong, ito hindi pa natin na ituturo, pero I'm very much willing to teach you, no? Ang Arduino pwede na natin i-combine sa mismong EV3 or yung Mindstorm, yung Lego Mindstorm. Pwede natin pagsamahin po lahat yan. That's how flexible Arduino is and Lego Mindstorm. Sobrang flexible yan. Later on, kung meron tayong chance, ituturo din natin yan. But let's focus here muna. So same code, different servo or different component. You can see here, meron tayo dito. The same. Ngayon, gagamitin natin yung analog zero. Ngayon, iwawire ko na to ma'am Jen. So, meron tayong component dito. Okay? So, i-coconnect ko lang po siya dito. Okay? Ayan. So, it doesn't matter kung saan po siya nakakonect. Wala naman pong positive or negative yan. Then, i-connect natin dito sa ating soil moisture sensor here. Ayan. Nakakonect na po yung dalawa. And of course, kailangan natin i-connect yung isa pa. Yung pinaka... Um, module natin, no? meron yung tatlo. Well, actually, apat. But then, we're not using the, GT, the digital pin. We're going to use the analog pin. So, hanapin po natin yung VCC. VCC, again, this is positive. We have also the, I think this is the same color. Uh, eliminate muna natin yan because they're, they're the same. And then, we have also the GND just beside the, the VCC, no? So, connect natin siya. Yan yung yellow natin is the GND. And then the other one, we have the analog A0 natin. Then connect it also. at the orange natin. Then let's wire. Again, the VCC should be connected to the 5V. Yeah, that's connected to 5V, making sure it's connected. And yung pangalawa, yung yellow, this is GND. And then the last one, this is analog zero. Ayan. Now, to check whether our sensor is working, you can see the light. Once nag-light po siya, that's working already. Now, since meron na tayong program, <coughs> excuse me, we don't need to upload it again. Hindi na natin kailangan mag-upload kasi na-upload na natin kanina yung program natin. All we need to do is going back to our, um, our program here in our Arduino. Ang gagawin ko po, i-open ko ulit ang serial monitor. Okay? Open ko ulit yung serial monitor natin sa ating Arduino application. Ayan po, anong lumab lumalabas? 1023, 1023, 1023. Bakit po lumalabas ang 1023? Lumalabas po ang 10 1023 maybe because we have some problem sa ating connection or sa ating voltage. Check natin. Tama ba na GND? Tama ba na VCC? Tama ba na A0? I-double check po natin. A0 tama. Now, eto naman po yung ating... Sensor, you can see nagbago. Bakit siya nagbago? Kasi nawakan ko. Merong resistance na. Kasi nakawakan ko na siya. Now, insert natin dito sa ating <laughs> mahiwagang lupa. Okay? Ayan. So, shout out sa aking nanay na naghanap ng lupa kasi walang lupa po dito sa paligid. You can see yung value nagbago. Nabawasan po siya. Yan yung resistance na po. Now, um, kung meron something dyan, pwede nating palitan to, no? I- baguhin ko lang konti yung ating arrangement ng wires. Meron kayang effect yung ating wire. Gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, pwede mo magbaliktad. Ayan po, the same pa rin po, no effect. Ayan. So now, bubuhusan ko ng tubig. Ibig sabihin na ito, maybe some, somewhat dry yung ating ating uh, tawag doon as sensor. Ayan. Okay, somewhat dry. 
Ayan. So, lagyan natin ng tubig. Hindi naman po masisira kasi, syempre, soil moisture to. Ayan. Napansin niyo po bang bumaba ng bumaba? That means to say, medyo basa na po siya. Ayan. Ayan po. Bumaba po ng bumaba. Sir, um, sir, wax, pwede mo bang ipakita yung ating... Ayan. Ayan, bumaba po siya. Binuhusan ko po siya ng tubig, ha? Yung ating ano. Ayan. Yung resistance po niya. That means to say, basa yung ating soil. Kapag basa, syempre, hindi mo didiligan kasi basa na. Ngayon, remove natin. Ano kayang value? Ayan. Anong value? Tumaas. Ibig sabihin, dry. Dry na po yung ating soil moisture sensor. Ibig sabihin, it's time to what? To water the plants. <laughs> diba? So, automatic, sasabihin niya, basa, dry na yung halaman mo, baka malantayan. So, kailangan mong diligan. Okay, going back here. Ayan. So, saan ba makikita to? Again, sa smart cities, very familiar na to ngayon sa mga smart hydroponics, smart um, greenhouse. Yan, meron na po ito ngayon. Gumagamit na sila yeah. ng soil moisture sensor to water their plants. Okay? So, okay. ma'am, Jen, I think na-demonstrate natin how to use this. Correct. Food. Oo. Food. Speaking of ulan, uulan na. Kaya, ano, <laughs> yan, we have 10 minutes left. Ayan yan ang tropa. Let's go. See yeah, them we have 10 again. minutes left. 10 minutes. Oh, dito na tayo. Oh, 10 minutes. Ah. Ang galing, Mr. Dom. Virtual club. Oh. Galing. Sinisip ko na. Sinisip ko na. Sinisip ko na. Pagod na. Sa laba. Sabi, <laughs> hindi sanay. Hindi sanay sa lupa. Oo. Oh, oh. Hindi sanay oh. ma-expose sa lupa. Sa saro. Ako puro lupa ako araw-araw. Teka, meron tayong message. <laughs> dahil yung guest natin, ako kawawa yes. naman. Hindi tao talaga right. sila makapasok sa internet. Dahil, ewan ko ha, Wisconsin, USA na po yung guest natin. But uh, they made a uh, video for us to welcome us. Uh, connected naman po yung kanilang pinadal, pinalabas na video with uh, the Tinkercad um, uh, that we that Sir Dom also uh, demonstrated and Miss Jen. And then, and also connected to the actual demonstrations na ginawa ni Sir Dom. So may we hear the message from Peter Hildock and Isabel Mendiola from Gearbox Lab USA. Good morning. Uh, my name is Peter Haydock. I am the COO of Gearbox Lab. And our deepest apologies about the technical issues this morning. Um, we've decided to record just a short hello video and uh, share with you what uh, we were going to say. Um, I'm one of the co-authors of the Arduino Classroom and uh, really look forward to sharing our work uh, that we've done over the last uh, six years in this curriculum. And uh, really my role this morning is to introduce Isabel Mendiola. She is our president and CEO of Gearbox Labs. She's also one of the co-authors, the other co-author really of the Arduino Classroom. It's her work in her classroom uh, that the, the projects from the book uh, came from. And uh, so I'm very pleased to introduce her to you. I wish you all the best in your, your uh, workshop today. And uh, hopefully we will be able to connect live someday as well. Good morning and uh, thank you for having us. So my name is Isabel Mendiola. I am the co-author of the Albino Classroom uh, curriculum. So I have a degree in uh, pedagogy and uh, um, master's degree in education. So I grew up in a industrial city with a need of workforce with skills and engineering is uh, 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 very important. So I had the opportunity to be teaching physics, chemistry, and biology, and uh, it helped me a lot to cover part of this need. Uh, so I took my students to field trips, and one of the most interesting uh, was the visit to the Association of uh, Agriculture um, Engineers where they explain how technology is being used in, um, in, in their jobs. So that, that's why part of this curriculum aims to environmental science and agriculture. So again, uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. And again, we wish you all the best. Um, and 
uh, look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ayan, I thought Ayan. our internet is bad. I am surprised. <laughs> oh, oh, ganun <laughs> talaga. Sa USA, ganun yeah. rin pala. Parang, Actually, ano. Actually, surprised ako dun. Ako surprised. Talagang super surprised. Okay, I think we have just five minutes left before we yes, sign up. Now, uh, any words from Sir Dom? Oh, sinipon ka na. Ang todo to. Kasi ako na sinisipon kanina, ma'am. While demonstrating, well, well I'm very much uh, happy po sa ating mga viewers na marami pong nakasunod yung percentage kanina. Uh, sobrang thankful po kasi still kahit hindi maganda yung internet connection natin and we have a very limited time, um, you still able to follow. And um, thank you din sa Felta, uh, kay Sir Wax and kay Ma'am Jen for having us for having me here and also our guests from um, Gearbox Love USA. We have an international guest which are very much willing to help us learn this type of um, you know, uh, topic which is Arduino programming. Again, uh, thank you very much po sa lahat ng viewers natin. To end my uh, demonstration, I would like to say that hindi po limited ang Arduino, not limited din ang ang uh, Lego Mindstorm, we can also combine them together to make, to create a more meaningful and more um, interactive or like uh, more advanced um, technology. If we combine different technology together, technology together, mas maganda po yung quality and mas maganda po yung output na magawa natin. Well, Felta can provide you all those stuffs, all those um, things naman, uh, which is very much, uh, yung quality niya is very, very good po. Ayan po. So, thank you very much po sa pag-invite po sa akin, Ma'am Mylene, Ma'am Jen, and yes. Sir, Sir Wax. So, meron so, pa tayo. May next week pa. <laughs> <laughs> Dewe, oh. Palakas oh, ka na. Oh. 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 Papadadalihan ka na okra sa mga kinakalkal ko dito. Okay. Paglulupa. So, Miss Jen, all right, yes, Sir Wax, any words for, uh, for our viewers? Thank what you is, sa... sa okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ikaw muna. I already posted the uh, attendance evaluation and submission of the output to Meron Tayo output for today. So, I'll post that po siya and then I'll be posting that also with the uh, Power INC page, Delta and uh, STEM5. Okay, so sa mga participants po namin, maraming salamat sa pakikinood sa amin para matuto. We learn as one. No, uh, mm -hmm. We continue to uh, provide specialized training for youth sa mga pagrupan mula po sa Delta, Montanitia. So, maraming salamat mm -hmm. uh, again for uh, giving us this uh, special training para po sa mga kagulupan ng bansa. Okay? Okay, yeah. Salamat po sa lahat na nag-participate sa Socrative. Alam ko, it's so hard to uh, do multiple gadgets, but there's still uh, people who try to do multiple. No, Alam ko, nangangain ng, ng load ang aming dalawang apps, but then you still manage to... Um, Help us know if you are coping up with the stress and the fun and everything under the sun. Because this is, is very, very rewarding, especially if it's not just to be teachers. No? Those who are watching who have their own kids and might be um, inclined into engineering and STEM. Uh, if you see that your your kids are inclined to those booting thing na Arduino board, uh, let's encourage them. We need them in the future. Uh, we're not always here. We need uh, sustainable people, not just a sustainable development. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. And then we, again, to our, our viewers, you will get your certificate of participation from Power, from Felta and Power. And we see you. We'll see you next week and the other weeks to come. More, more, more exciting learnings to come for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much and have a blessed, blessed weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.